Oh. <laughs> My magic spell has worked and has transported us to the world Wait, Mark, of Dungeons and Dragons. Else. I'm on the other side. <laughs> Hello, everybody, and welcome to get on. Welcome to High Rollers Dead Reckoning. This is a brand new Kimberly. <laughs> this is a brand new mini series here on the Wizards uh, Dungeons and Dragons Twitch channel. Normally we are on our own channel for High Rollers, but this time we're here exclusive on Wizards D and D. If you're feeling always cast, thanks for coming over, showing your support. Tell your friends. Tell yeah. everybody about this because a lot of people yeah. might be trying to watch if it. Anyone on your tell your parents. parents. Get, get your parents in. Come in. Yeah. Get your dog in. Get um, your cat in. Yeah. Welcome, well. friends. I am your Dungeon Master, Mark Sherlock Humes, although I will be less of a Dungeon Master and more of a helping them create characters today. Uh, joining me, going round a different way of the table, I have Chris Trot. Hello. I have Katie. Hi. I have Tom Hazel. Hello. Fresh in, new Why member. I guess her name? Also, because, I don't know. Uh, Katie Morrison, there you go. Look at this. Uh, I know, we've got like bricks and a cool sword in the corner. I was talking about the chair. chair. Oh, okay, on the chair. chair. Okay. It's real. Nice. It's actually real. real, it's not green screen. It's not green it's screen. Amazing. It's our part. It is oh. still a work in progress. You're still going to see a little bit of like bits it's that need painting. Sword, I don't have it behind me. Yeah. Um, it's still being worked on, but we're in an exciting uh, new set. Uh, Tom Hazel joining us as he is a new member, official member of the High Rollers crew. He's joining us for our new mini series here at Wizards. Oh, so and then finally, we have. Kim Richards, who is very hyped up today. I can already tell she's in one of those Kimberly moods. <laughs> um, I got all my notes! Now, you might be wondering, oh, cool, great D&D today. Today is going to be a kind of a prologue stream for our brand new mini-series called Dead Reckoning. The guys are going to be creating characters. It's something a lot of people have been asking us to do on stream before, to go over character creation process, but also it gives us an opportunity to talk about and figure out how the party knows each other and all that kind of good stuff, and an opportunity for me to give you a basic premise and explanation of the world of the Forgotten Realms, mm. which is where this is all set. Mm -hmm. um, I will give you a one brief thing before we get started on creating characters, oh, and that is... Who gave Tom a seat? Huh? I know, he's got a proper seat, he's got a big boy seat. Yeah, you've got the child seat this time. Yeah. I can go get a stool if you want to. No, you stay on that chair. Okay, I will. I, I think, I think you should get After a that Chris Trott's disastrous performance in the last miniseries, yeah. he has to earn a big boy chair hey. again. Yeah. Well, yeah. we'll see how it goes. Let's see how it goes. I just love Fresh new character. Fresh off. new characters, that's what it is. <laughs> you like giving Nina a nervous breakdown. <laughs> yes, I do. If you have not seen Uncharted Territory, <clears throat> which is our previous mini stream we did for Wizards of the Coast in association with The Tomb of Annihilation, uh, which is the brand new module coming out, go and rec recommend you watch that. It's on the Wizards um, uh, YouTube channel and their Twitch VODs as well. And you can it's also watch episodes. it on the Yogs Live YouTube channel yes. as well. It's only 10 episodes and it was sort of a whistle stop tour of The Tomb of Annihilation. It was kind of my, all the things that I quite liked in it, I brought out and did like a quick bye bye. What this campaign will be, and this is kind of semi-important, is my take, it's not an official take, it's my take on a prologue to the Tomb of Annihilation. Um, in the Tomb of Annihilation, one of the things that starts off is the players are hired by a group called the Harpers to try and locate something called the Soulmonger and solve something called the Death Curse. And it starts uh, 20 days after the Death Curse has been activated. So in a Rogue One style fashion, uh, this campaign is gonna be the how the Harpers come to know about the Soulmonger and the fact that it's originating from Cholt um, and how they learn that information. Um, and that's kind of gonna be the premise, uh, one of the loose premises of this campaign. Um, and otherwise than that, it's gonna be character creation. Um, I've got some questions I'm gonna ask the guys um, and I'm generally here uh, to, to answer questions things like that. One last thing before we crack on and that is if you would like to watch our regular Dungeons & Dragons stream which we do every Sunday at 5pm BST which is 9am uh, PDT. Oh you worked it out nice. I did. Uh, that's a homebrew campaign, that's the one we've been running for nearly two years, like we're a year and a half oh, and yeah, a bit. Yeah, 50, 50, yeah. Getting up to two years, 50 episodes. 58 episodes. 15, yeah. 58 episodes. I only remember oh. because I was writing the notes to myself recently. Right. Uh, 58 episodes. Um, that is all on twitch.tv forward slash yogscast on Sundays, 5 p.m. BST to 9 and or, or 9 a.m. PDT. Or you can catch up on Yogs Live as well, which is a YouTube channel where all of our thing is. Just find the playlist of High Rollers. Yeah. High Rollers on YouTube and you Follow can search us from there. At High Rollers DD on Twitter and we'll, you'll soon find out where all of our stuff is. That's it. And then the last thing I was just going to say is there is loads of new streams being added to the Wizards D&D uh, schedule. You can check out the schedule in the description box below, and that's got all of the cool streams that you can Too watch. Too many to list. Too many great streams to list right now, especially since I haven't written them down. Um, so, 
<clears throat> I will give you guys um, one of the, one of the few things I'm going to say about this campaign is there was two kind of uh, presets that I kind of gave to you, not like things that you had to do. Well, one of them is, and the other one is just a, a thing to keep in mind. The first thing is you must all play characters that have previously died once before and have been brought back to life somehow. So you might want to think about um, how that happened, who brought you back, that sort of thing. Okay. And then the other one is. Think of this as a kind of anti-hero campaign. This isn't going to be your traditional, like, we are good, noble warriors of the realm, save the maidens and slay Sad the dragons. Um, crossing this out. This is, yeah, sorry, <laughs> you can't be Sir, so Sir Thomas the, the Brave. Oh. Um, well, so you could be. <laughs> save the no. maidens, kill the dragons. Now it's bang the dragons, kill the maidens. Sure, if you, that's <laughs> the way you want to play it. But this is going to be what I call Thanks. an anti-heroic adventure. So not necessarily villains, not necessarily evil, Evil characters, although you could certainly swing that way if you preferred. Evil. Merciless. Evil. Merciless, but definitely anti hero. Think the Punisher, um, yeah. you know, think that kind of character. That's you know, pretty brutal. It's pretty brutal. <laughs> uh, think Punisher. Well, you know, that's an, an example of an archetype you could right. kind of play. Um, or just a really selfish, selfish, callow, callous character that doesn't care about anything. So, Chris my Trump. initial thoughts. Can I just play Theo again? Yeah, no. <laughs> she died. She was perfect for this kind of campaign. <laughs> Okay. Immediately I thought of just a, a normal guy, quite mm -hmm. tan skin, short, black hair, and he's got this really tight-fitting tunic. Uh, and on it is a white skull. <laughs> and he's got two crossbows. Yeah. And he has yeah. this yeah. steel-clad uh, horse. Okay. With loads of gadgets and stuff on it. Okay. Uh, you know. Sure. Can you tell what it is you yet? Can, you could play that if you really wanted to, but you would be mocked. I'm calling him Funisher. Funisher, because <laughs> he brings the fun? Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. What do you think? Sure. That's not actually my idea. No, I know it isn't. That's why I'm saying sure, because I know so, it's not actually your idea. I think what might be good for the audience. Okay, yeah. Uh, because some people haven't made characters before. That's true. We should go through what that process is. Go through is. the steps. Yeah, that's a good... Thank you, Chris Trot, because I've done this too many times in my life, so I forget how easy it is. I have an I idea haven't. for my character. Okay. Uh, it's got like tan skin <laughs> and like short <laughs> black hair. Okay. Well, the thing is, is you've actually, this is the first step of creating a character is coming up with a vague concept. Things like race and class, like obviously they're important factors in that, but having a kind of uh, theme or some sort of like base idea of like, yeah, I want to be a runaway son who doesn't care, you know, has eschewed his family fortune because he's a psychopath or something or you know, wants to go off and do this kind of thing. Having a vague theme. And, and then that, the main, yeah. the main yeah. choices you then need to make is what race and what class. And I think race is the easiest one to figure out to start with because that kind of sets a lot of other stuff up. It influences culture. Because this is taking place in the Forgotten Realms, um, we're probably going to use the Sword Coast Adventurer's Guide, which we've got a couple of copies of here, um, yeah. because this has got great information on um, how certain races from the from the Player's Handbook and stuff fit in. Um, you're also welcome to play, I know we've got some people that you guys were looking at some stuff from um, additional oh, books. Use the Sword Coast Adventurer's well, Guide, which we've got him. a couple of Kimberly. I just wanted to see the chat. I love how the first Mute. thing you did was pull it close to the <laughs> like, yeah, yeah, this is Mosh. Um, I know some of you wanted to look at some stuff from Unearth Arcana and DM's Guild and stuff like that, so more, more than happy to go over those as well. I totally agree with the book. Coming up with a theme before you pigeonhole yourself into a class is often the best way. Yeah, because that's the thing is you don't want to just be like, I'm gonna play a fighter and then you're building very specifically around off the fighter. Off the idea it's of better to go like abilities. I wanna be a swashbuckling rapier, you know, like a kind really? of swashbuckler, yeah. because then you can go, well, I could be a fighter, but I could be a rogue, I could be a ranger. You might be going like, no, I want to be a wizard swashbuckler, you know. I think mix like you gotta mix it up. It, it makes I think the if interesting you pick characters. A class first, you'll kind of you'll limit your creative opportunities mm -hmm. a little bit. The thing in the Sword Coast Adventures guide as well is that there's also slight alterations on classes. So mm -hmm. there's like, um, or it's slight sort of, I guess they explain races in more depth. So yeah. an elf, it gives you sun elves and moon elves yeah. and stuff like that. Because they're so specific it, to the world itself. It, it gives you some ideas of, oh, I, I was thinking about being an elf, but now this specific kind of elf, and mm. then you can look at that in more detail. And well, say, I know, yeah. Because that's how I've previously done it, and then I do that. I've done that this time for races. Because I know as well. you've got a, you've got a, a fairly rough, solid idea of I've what got you want to play. I've a fairly solid haven't? idea. Um, I've got a thing. Uh, but I think we've all had a thing. Yeah, yeah. I, I had a fairly solid idea, but but it came from looking at the classes and looking more in depth at different variations of the classes, mm -hmm. like different paths. So my yeah, initial thought for this campaign is that I'd be a monk, but not. Um, 
a way of the long death monk. Yeah, which, which is, is a in... bit more sinister, a bit more mm -hmm. like. Well, they're kind of obsessed with death, aren't yeah, they? And like they the like, way things die, and they like to study the way things die, and that's <laughs> see, when you said the type of campaign it was going to be anti heroes. Uh, that's kind of it immediately stood out. So, so some people in chat are making characters right now. I think oh really? That's a good idea. You can actually go on the D and D website and get a PDF. I mean, just make a character with us. Oh, make a character with us. Make a character. Why not? I mean, I'll we'll download the, the sheets chat as well. We've got the um, chat in front of yeah, us. If any of you chat. are using D and D Beyond, you can also make characters on there as well. Uh, you can use D and D Beyond to make that. Use that. I've, I've got the That's best. Very blurry. But thank you, Kim. PDF in the world. You've got the one off DM Guild, haven't I've you? Got, that also fills uh, in. Yeah, it fills itself. What's his name? What have you done MBMs. To you? Uh, character class thing for mm -hmm. DMs Guild. Holy crap, it's good. It just auto completes a lot of stuff. It's got extra pages for like filling out class it's features really and things like that. Okay, so why don't we go around the table? We'll start with you because I think the three of you I know have got fairly solid ideas of what you want to be. Yeah. And you're you were a bit uncertain, but it now looks like it's not uncertain. It's I just want to be everything. Yeah, you want to be everything. Most, um, mostly all the OP things. Yeah. No, not too bad. I think like after <laughs> I said no to Dragon Knight, it very clearly got distilled down into non broken Harassing things. Harassing you on Twitter. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so yeah. I, I still think my idea of being a zombie T-Rex was great. Nope. And, like I could bark at <laughs> no. it. Like, you know, I no. I thought that was brilliant. No, it sounds great. It's not going to happen. Um, instantly someone in our chat has asked where a uh, long, long death monk, death long monk comes from. It comes from the Sword Coast Adventure Guide. How many books do we have? <laughs> All right. We've got a lot of books. We've got, we got a lot of books. books. This comes is your book. <laughs> Sword Coast Adventure's Guide. It's I in saw there. four on screen though and it baffled me. <laughs> it's because um, mine was also in yeah. this screen and mine. Uh, so, yeah, so basically I went to page 130, by the way, if you, are, if you have the book of the Sword Coast Adventures Guide where it has mon monastic traditions and it says Way of the Long Death. So if you have watched our other campaign, our main campaign, you'll see that Juto is a, um, a monk of the four, le four elements. Yeah. Path of the Four Elements. Um, so Way of the Long Death is basically uh, obsessed with the meaning and mechanics of dying. So, Pretty cool. Tomb of Annihilation, Death Curse. <laughs> Sounds like me when I it, was a it, teenager. It's a good fit. Certainly, I mean, one of the things I know when I was kind of talking to you guys, like, I was saying, like, think of characters like necromancers, ex-cult members, yeah. that sort of thing. Like, that will definitely fit in quite well with the themes. Um, okay, so you want to play uh, Long Death Monk, Katie, do you know what race? Drow. So you want to play a Drow. Now, potentially. Drow, a poten is, uh, drow are quite different in the Forgotten Realms, so like maybe the way that I've done Drow in our home game. Um, they are basically one of the kind of generic bad guys in the Forgotten they're Realms. Vilified. Of, they're very vilified. The um, they're treacherous, they're underhand, they're malicious. They are generally not nice people. Uh, the, it's kind of, it comes from an, an age of D&D which was perhaps a little bit boys clubby because it's ruled by women and they're all evil. So it's a little bit like, <laughs> uh, but they've kind of adapted it since then. And you know, in fifth edition, they've like brought elements in to kind of make it less that. Um, but they are still very much a matriarchal society and they are still very, very much about uh, uh, staying in power through certainly underhand means. Drow assassins, that sort of thing is all very so common. A monk drow that's obsessed with death. And spice. Well, <laughs> the other question to think about for your character, Katie, to think about is how much of a devout follower of Loth she is. Now, obviously, yeah. Loth is kind of like this spider goddess that kind of is predominant in drow society. Um, and people that don't worship Loth are pretty much outsiders and exiles that either come up to the surface because they're wanted for death or to try and get away from this kind of very uh, persuasive culture. But you can also just be a very loyal servant who's just like, I'm gonna go fuck up some shit. And then like, <laughs> doo -doo 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 -doo, and you're gonna kick some ass. So that's one thing for you to think about. Aww. Tom Hazel, yes. what are your ideas? Tell me. So, um, immediately when you said anti-heroes and that sort of thing, mm -hmm. I obviously thought of characters from The Witcher. Of you course, know how I know. I yeah, I mean, when I, I remember when you, you were the yeah. <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> I know when I told you of the Blood Hunter and the fact that uh, from DM's Guild and one of the things is called Order of the Mutant, which is basically a Witcher. Oh, you, was, your eyes were like. <gasps> that but was, I know that's not what you're playing. That's not what I'm going for. So I uh, really liked. Uh, it's either Cleaver or Reaver from The Witcher Three. I think it's Cleaver. I think it's Cleaver. Um, and he's like this dwarf who is like a criminal mastermind. He runs the under, under like criminal underground in, in Novigrad. 
and I basically just wanted to play a character very that's similar absolutely to that. Fine. Yeah. So I Cleaver. That's the thing, like Cleaver. When it comes so to his character ideas, uh -huh. I, I mean, for the first character idea, it, uh, my first character I ever built was literally just looking at the illustrations in the book <laughs> and just saying, "Oh, that one looks really cool." Honestly, that's a good way to do it. Or just going I, on places yeah. like DeviantArt or Pinterest and being like, "Elf." I like that one. <laughs> I'm gonna make them sexy elf. And, oh That's no! That's kind of why I was a monk because I love the monk artwork Working in the, the PHP. Player's handbook. Mm -hmm. and I, you know, yeah. yeah it's, a, it's a good visual thing because it's that. That's visual why there's element. so much awesome art in the books. Mm. It's inspiring. Yeah. Wow. Um, so but, yeah. Like so a, he's. So this character. You want to play a bit of a kind of criminal thug. Yeah. The kind of you know he runs like protection rackets. Yeah. And he, uh, you know interrogates people by busting their kneecaps and things yep. like that. Like when you said merciless, that was the first thing that came to mind. Busting kneecaps. Busting kneecaps. <laughs> I love it. Cutting off fingers. All right. Yeah. Okay. And, you know, we do other body parts. He does other body parts. But the kneecap is a speciality. Yeah. Okay. He's, he's got, yeah. So like I've based a lot of my character themes around that. Like he's got like a sort of cane-like mace. Okay. Um, which he uses to, you know, smash in kneecaps, things like that. Kneecaps are a particular, he really likes them. Is it because? Or he doesn't like them. Well, doesn't. Are you going to play a small race character? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> so that makes the kneecaps even more Easier of a, to like, it's an easy target. Okay. As long as he got short man syndrome. Yeah. Well, maybe, well, uh, that's... Or is he quite proud of being, being a small folk? Maybe that makes it easier for him to do his job. Yeah. Well, I think that makes him even better as a criminal mastermind. Because if, if people, like, look at him and, like, he's the head of this entire operation, they there's me. no way. What does he do to and earn that title? And then all of a sudden the, the cane comes out, <laughs> bang, that's a kneecap. And so, that's again, that's again, so it sounds like Rogue is going to be the most obvious <laughs> class. Yeah, so one of the people uh, in chat was saying um, that we should try the master, was it mastermind? Mastermind, right? which is again in, in this, that. conveniently. So I um, feel like that, I haven't actually properly read through the mastermind. I will, I will flip to it and I will pass it over to you. Um, so he's mostly going to be that. So, yeah. This is the. Okay. So I should point out one thing. I should mention is the characters they're creating are going to be level six. So okay. they can uh, think about archetypes and stuff like that. Um, so your guys' characters are going to come in at level six. So you can think about that. Means you could also, and this might be relevant for you, Tom, is you can think about multi-classing. So if you wanted okay. him to be a bit more of an aggressive. Rather than just being a pure rogue, you could take a couple of fighter levels, you could take a couple of, you know, other classes. Like, if you wanted to give him a bit of heft, um, you could think about taking a couple of levels in so that. So it could be a couple of levels in Mastermind, and also... Well, you need to be at least level three in rogue to get Mastermind, oh, uh, which okay. will unlock the basic things. But the thing to think about is Mastermind is like, it's adding elements to the rogue. It's adding flavor to the rogue that you're going to unlock as you level up. Yeah. But you could be like, yeah, three levels in rogue and three levels in fighter. You could be four levels in rogue and two levels in fighter. Whichever way you kind of want to play around with it, basically. So it wouldn't be, it wouldn't be that I would have, say, three levels in rogue and then I'd have the fourth level from fighter. It would be level yes, one. Yes, you'd be, you'd be a level one fighter and uh, four rogue, effectively. Okay. So that's the way it works. And the thing to think about with that is, is Think about how that training's come about. So if he's got like a couple of levels in fighter, maybe it's because like in his early criminal career, he yeah. worked as like a bruiser. Like he literally walked around beating the crap out of people. Nice. And then as he's learned the business, he's learned the more underhand tactics um, and that sort of thing. Oh. So there's, there's a couple of things to think about. Like multi-classing is, is something which a lot of people don't do, but it can mm. give you really interesting, like you can build interesting characters around it. Okay. Can you be level one of everything? You in th if you had the right stats, because multi class there are prerequisites, so yeah, normally yeah, you have to have 12 or 13 in certain stats, but if you had like all 13s, you could take a level in probably Wizard every one, class. Rogue one, Ranger one. <laughs> You'd be probably one. useless, but that <laughs> yeah. would be very interesting to see. I think Patrick Rothfuss, <laughs> in, a, of none. Patrick Rothfuss in a recent C team, he's playing like a guest character, and he's like two levels of Barbarian, four levels of wizard and one level of rogue and it's because wow. he wanted to play like this bum half orc that goes around like and flunks out of like wizard school so he became a rogue for a while and that was like his edgy era and then he's like a he's like also into thrash bard metal so he's a <laughs> barbarian um and mm. like that's a, that was obviously a funny jokey kind of thing i should look up drabus drebus yes drebus beastinger is patrick rothfuss character um kimberly I know you have been uh, agonizing over this. Do you have any rough? I know you wanted to play a lot of different things. Death, uh, Dragon Knight. Nope. T Rex Zombie. Mm -mm. <laughs> uh, Tortle. Yeah. 
called, oh. called Leonardo? No. If you were playing a <laughs> Torkoal that wasn't clearly based on the Ninja Turtles, maybe. Oh, there's maybe there. Um, there's a maybe. Where tiger? Can't be a wear tiger specifically, but there are ways to do lycanthropy, called, such called as fluffy, McFluffy face. No. <laughs> um, there is Matt Mercer's DM's Guild Blood Hunter, which has the lycanthrope order of the lycanthrope. Um, In all seriousness, mm. let's get serious. Um, so, what I think what I've kind of settled on um, is I definitely wanted to be a blood hunter, mm -hmm. uh, which is Matt Mercer's. Um, class that he created for Vin Diesel. So yeah, it, well, he created, so they did a thing to promote The Last Witch Hunter where they did like a 30 minute game of D&D. &D, yeah, and he made a witch yeah. hunter. And he made a witch hunter class for that. Um, and then he adapted that into The Blood Hunter, mm -hmm. which was less based on the movie. Mm, yeah. <laughs> it's like, let's yeah. take the, some of the stuff from the movie <laughs> and then make a, a, take a the class. Take stuff yeah. out. But it's also kind of like Witcher inspired as well. It's very Witcher inspired. Yeah. There's certainly elements of the warlock in it. It's very like, he was haunted, Blood Hunter is haunted by a dark past and now must go after evil, but evil. in an evil way. But being evil. Um, yeah. It's yeah. like the whole fight fire with fire kind of thing yeah. they go with. And you know what, like, I love Vin Diesel, so, you know. You can't just I, make Vin Diesel. I live my life by trying to emulate him. Which is why I'm so buff, mm. like you yeah. know, and, and you I drive super drive fast really cars. fast cars, yeah. and like you know, hang out with sexy ladies. You do play D and D you though. Curb driving into the spot. yeah, I did. And you do <laughs> <laughs> to your credit, Kim, you do one thing. Vin Diesel is a D and D player, so you've got that in common with Vin Diesel. He's also a gamer. Yeah, I know. And it's I reviewed one of his games. The Chronicles of Reddick stuff. Oh, Stuntman. Is all right. It was. It was pretty fun. <laughs> Um, did you know that he if he said that once he wanted to set up a game studio to make an RPG Based on set. his D&D character. No, but set in the... Oh, fuck. What is, like, one of the really early races in the world? Um, before Egyptians. Mesopotamian. So it sounds like that, but, <laughs> like... It was, it was something, I can't remember. Anyway, maybe so, like, it's, it's like that kind of era. Like, okay. yeah, he wanted to set like an RPG in that oh, kind of era. And he was just like, I, I fucking love this era of history. And it was just like, it turns out, so he's a gamer nerd, a history nerd. Sumerian? Sumerian, I think it was. I don't want to spend too much time. On anyway, I don't yeah. want to spend too much time on D and D fact, Vin Diesel facts. But I've got one more Vin Diesel fact for you. <laughs> In the movie Triple X, he got to design a bunch of his own tattoos, and oh, he had yeah. his favorite D and D character's name, Melkor, tattooed across his back, and you can see it very clearly in a lot of the scenes. Wow. Melkor. It was <laughs> a half wow. drow, half dragon. Riddick you can't play one of those. Sweet. Riddick. Riddick's, Riddick's based on one of his My race. Half drow. Half anyway. Race. Well, you can pick what you, the other half Maybe potentially. Yeah, it could, could be, be a half drow. drow. Which is a half elf, you'd use the half elf stats. Half drow, half turtle. <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> How would Nina draw it? That's what I'm curious about. With her tears. With her tears. So in all seriousness, you um, were looking so at Blood Hunter. Hunter. And then... Out of all of that, we got Blood Hunter. <laughs> it's, all it's all related to Vin Diesel. It's all related. Um, and then... So Blood Hunter has various orders, which is Order of the Ghost Slayer, Order of the Profane Soul, and Order of the Mutant. And order the mutant. The mutant, an order of the lichen, yeah. which is possibly a way I could be a werewolf. It's definitely, I, to me, it's the best way of incorporating the idea of wanting to play a were creature mm. into something which I think is mechanically sound and doesn't convey unfair advantages. Mm -hmm. Because the problem is, is lycanthropy can be given to players in yeah. game, but it very much feels like something you should get infected with and have consequences for. Allowing somebody to just go like, I'm going to be a, a wear tiger straight from the start. Yeah. It gives you an inherent advantage okay. over other people. Um, okay, so that's what so you're looking at. So that was something that I wanted but the chat race, to help me work uh -huh. with, was like which order to go for. Uh -huh. uh, and then race, finally, I kind of, uh, Mark gave me Velo's Guide mm -hmm. to Munsterhouse. And I think the thing that spoke to me immediately was Asimar. 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 It's not ASMR. As ASMR. ASMR. As ASMR. Yeah. I'm ASMR. basically going to whisper. <laughs> oh no, to people. that's going to really trigger trauma. Like, trigger you know, and happen. just like, just like, you know, make calming sounds. It's not calming. You got to make the, lip, the, the mouth noises. Oh, oh don't. Why are you all doing it? <laughs> why are you all doing it? <laughs> um, I'm going to be an ASMR, uh -huh. which is a celestial being. 
Um, they have like a guardian angel or queen yeah. force or something. So they're humans, but they're like, they work for the celestials. They love them. Fucking love celestials. Like, holy god. Like, uh -huh. uh, but I'm a fallen one. I don't, I don't. You're going like, to be edgelord? Yeah, I edgelord. edgelord. Well, well, because the thing is, you know what you said about artwork? Mm -hmm. I mean, especially people who know my Flux Buddies thing. But, I mean, look at this artwork no, for, can... for an Asmar. A fallen ass. It's so not in focus. It's <laughs> so really not. Really bad. You get the general idea. Put it on idea, the, Put it here. Put it um, here, and then Sam can show Sam, the, maybe Sam or Steve. You get the general <laughs> idea. Um, and <clears throat> like it looks exactly hey. like um, Specimen Five oh, from yeah. Flux Baddies. Um, so I saw that, that and I was like, <laughs> Google it. Just it's <laughs> page 105 in Volo's Guide to, to Monsters. Maybe just leave it there and maybe yeah. we can do it. Kim's going to need it. Yeah. Yeah. No. So, um, so no. I'm oh. going to be, I'm gonna be there a we go. Thank you, Sam. fallen edgelord. Um, fallen edgelord. Excellent. Blood okay, winter. that works. Perfect. We'll get on to the... Chris Trott, do you have a rough idea? Yes. Okay, tell me of so, your rough idea. I'm going to need to write this down. <clears throat> so, uh, in the past High Rollers games, I've been someone who isn't very good at combat. Scenarios. Or staying alive. Uh, or staying alive. <laughs> You've In played general. like tricksy, spellcasty kind of classes. So, from that, I thought, wouldn't it be really cool to be a very religious, zealot, armor plated man? Full it's a classic. Yes. Yeah? Uh, but, on Earth Darkana, hello, uh, <laughs> I've gone with. <laughs> Paladin, mm -hmm. Oath of Conquest. Yeah, I mean, like, yeah, the uh, religious zealot in armor, Paladin, 100%, yeah. So, I will explain the Oath of Conquest a little bit. Uh, calls the paladins who seek glory in battle and the subjugation of their enemies. It isn't enough for these paladins to establish order, they must crush the forces <laughs> of chaos. Conan, <laughs> what is the meaning of life? To see your enemies crushed, driven before you, and to hear the lamentation of the women. Yeah. Wow. Basically. So, yeah, I'm going to be a pretty pissed off man. Human? A human. Just, a, just a man? A man. A human. A man. A regular man. What is a man? A miserable pile of secrets. It's uh, a Castlevania reference. He, before he references. died, <laughs> I've thought about all of this. Okay, <laughs> yeah, go for it. Keep, keep talking. Before he died. So, something that works really well in the Forgotten Realms mm -hmm. is the Order of the Steel Fang. Have you heard of them? No, I haven't. Tell me more. Here, let me Google it for you. <laughs> the Order of the Steel... I've heard of the some of the different I'm orders, but I've never heard of this, this one. Yes. Sorry. It's Sorry an elite militant, militant order yeah. within the Church of Tempus, mm -hmm. and I thought... Tempus? Tempus is a great god Tempus for is a fucking... an Earth of Conquest, because oh. it's all about battle. Yeah. And all about glory. Yeah, bring and up I, Tempus. I like to think I was quite an elite, like high up in the military. Okay, so um, a soldier. Uh, there's actually a name. Oh, Frank Dyerha, which is a guardian priest, which is pretty cool. Uh, oh, nice. And they're called the Hammers, right? So the, the people... Fo well, T Tempest is called the Foe Hammer, which is pretty fucking cool. Pretty cool. So, yeah, I was part of that, and I devoted my life to Tempus, and I was part of this elite military unit for Tempus. Yeah, zealot, fucking crazy. Yeah. However. I was a bit crazier than the other guys, like really devout, and I felt like the guys in my rank were not pulling their weight, not giving enough glory in battle, okay. not pummeling the foes to absolute oblivion. So and until so they bloody husks. I had doubts about my own order. Uh -huh. um, to the point where, in fact, my thoughts became true, and they are the reason I died, because of their negligence. So they battle. let you down, basically. They let me down, oh, and I got butchered shit. to death by the very enemy I was trying to crush. Put you um, to death. What enemy were you but trying to crush? Do you have a, an, an idea <laughs> this of who is, your enemy uh, would be? talk to chat or you okay. about who that was. Yeah, who there's would plenty the of order different of enemies. Steel Fang truly hate? Well, there's lots of different religious uh, groups that they can be against. Um, I mean, in terms of like, if it was against grungs. other gods and things like that. <laughs> <laughs> just want to wipe out the grungs. Um, but there's also things like greater threats. So this is taking place after um, giants have attempted to invade the Sword Coast. Um, dr uh, draconic cults of Tiamat have been rampaging across the lands, gathering treasure, trying to summon their ancient goddess. Okay, so there's plenty uh, of different um, options. Here, like the Fae. Yeah, like the Archfey are always up to trouble. The de you could Cobalt. even be against like demons and fiends. Yeah, um, and and they could be the reason of my resurrection. Like I could be cursed back to life. Okay. Um, and so the, the demons brought you back as a, some sort of punishment, as a kind of... 
Or like a mockery. A mockery. A mockery like, to the Steel Fang, like, look what we've done to your okay. elite. Yeah. Um, and so and it, I've, I've been left You wandering. could almost have it where, like, maybe for a time you were kind of possessed or mind controlled by the demonic forces and, like, you fought against your. but then you kind of yeah. broke free of it. Uh, but now you're kind of, like, on your own. You don't. I'm like, a little bit insane. Okay. Because of this. And do you want to, like, create your own order within the Church I of Tempest? I think I'm now a Lone Ranger. Okay. Off on his own, detached from everything. So there's a really cool thing about Tempest, which I've just been reading. Um, he might seem to manifest before a battle, appearing to one side or the other. If he's seen riding a white mare, a white mare called Veros, then army will succeed. If he rides a black stallion, which oh. would look badass, uh, Deiros, Dyr uh, then defeat is certain. But I like the idea that maybe in your army mind, it's like with a black stallion to show them that they will be defeated. Oh man, that's cool! So you could start off with like a yes. super cool. So if he just walks in, does it mean like he's just, he's just not sure? Impartial, neutral. Impartial. Okay. He'll decide great, then and there. Yeah. yeah, he'll decide that. But that's just a cool. I like that as a I cool like thing. That. that is pretty fucking badass. So Tempest. Yeah, it's going to be a bit more badass rather than yeah. cheeky. So Tempest, and what was the order called? Order, order of, of the Steel Fang. Order of the Steel Fang. I was a a diehard. Hammer. And yeah, if, hammer. if chat, if you've got any cool ideas for enemies in the world of the Forgotten Realms, so we're talking like who are the common enemies? You've got the Drow. Ah, now one, it could be depending on what type of army you were, you've got the Knights of Cormir, the purple dragon knights, they're kind of a, a, a big mm. military force. Mm. You've got the Red Wizards of Thay, you've got the Zentrim, who are like more mm. like spies, yeah, no, but they're no, kind no. of a, they're bad dudes. Um, you, yeah, you've got the Drow in the Underdark, the Giants, uh, demons are always fucking causing trouble, like the Demon Princes, like Asmodeus, and the, the, the demonic forces there. Uh, or the devil, dev, the infernal forces, I should say. Oh, I, love, still I love the Black Stallion thing. That's cool. Black Stallion. I, I ride into battle on a Black Stallion to show the enemy that they are guaranteed to die. Yeah. <laughs> a lot of people are saying flumps. 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 The ultimate enemy. The Snake ultimate. people. You want to? We had so many sick people <laughs> in every good campaign. We're good with some good thing. We're good um, those. But yeah, that's really cool. I like that as well. I like the idea of like, yeah, he's been brought back maybe as this mockery and like these kind of things yeah, have insulted it. But now he's on his own. Because I was so powerful mm. and cool and hench as fuck, <laughs> I even broke away from them. Yeah. So nice. I like it. And now it. I'm running Nomad style okay. on my own. What's a Tarask? A Tarask oh, is don't. an infamous <laughs> legendary beast that basically is said when it awakens, destroys the world. It's the most hardcore monster. No. <laughs> I'd like, okay. No. I can ride into you, battle on I'm a Tarask. Not, you are not playing monsters. Okay. Tarask is knights. Do you want to see a Tarask? I'd like to be a beholder. Okay. <laughs> if you can be a beholder, you could, I'm now, being a zombie T-Rex. <laughs> now, you, you say that you're a criminal mastermind, Tom. I can tell you that there is um, a there is a beholder that runs a thieves guild. <laughs> what? In I believe either oh, Waterdeep or Neverwinter, um, he's called <clears throat> Xanathar, I believe, um, and he runs a thieves guild, which I can't remember the name of. Um, but you could work for a beholder. Mm. <laughs> I could work <laughs> for a beholder. I'm not sure. Interesting. I'd like to do that. That sounds horrible. Um, there's loads of different thieves yeah. guild. Like you're more than welcome yes, to make up your own. Yeah, so I saw City of Greyhawk is known as the City of Thieves. So Greyhawk is not in the Forgotten Realms. Greyhawk is its own type of oh, city. Okay. I would say if you wanted to come from, so the major cities that you're likely to see a lot of thievery and stuff in is there's a place called Arm, which is full of like thieves guilds and generally like bad dudes and assassins and that sort of thing. Luskin, which is basically kind of like fantasy Russia full of gangsters and nice. bad people. Um, and they're generally, Luskins are known as having like a bad reputation, like, oh, you don't want to don't go to Luskin, mate. Like, oh, no, bad idea. Okay. Uh, full of bad people. But then there's also like the major cities like Neverwinter, Waterdeep, and Baldur's Gate <laughs> all have their own sort of like big thieves guilds and I'm stuff like that as well. I'm to call it the Hazelnuts. <laughs> oh my god, yes! Uh, Got my own group, the please. Hazelnuts. That was the sourest that recommended. With two L's. Yeah, with two L's. <laughs> two L's! And then he smashes me. <laughs> you slag. So, um, while you guys are thinking, we can probably do some basic mechanic stuff here, and that is rolling stats. Yeah, so we've come up with our you got your concepts, ideas, yeah. and we've got some races and classes going mm -hmm. on, which is good. Step zero. We can start basing those around it. Start um, fleshing out. First step is everybody, and this is kind of one of those fun bits, is rolling stats. Oh, yeah. So the way you do this, for those of you who've never made a character before, um, is uh, I'm going to do it with... Let's have a very central immobile, immobile dice, tray. dice tray. So there's a couple of ways you can do this. Now, the way that I prefer to do this is my home rule is everybody does it by rolling dice. You roll 4d6. Um, I'm just going to leave it there. 
Uh, yeah. You roll 46, and then you take away the lowest one. You do that six times, and then those are your stats. I have my own personal house rule where I say that if your total modifiers aren't higher than plus three, which means that you're pretty much in a very kind of underpowered character, you can use the standard array from the player's handbook, which is a standard set of, of abilities Thanks, that Sam. everybody can use. I can actually read I, I think it might be Steve. Oh, Steve. Thanks, Steve. Um, but yeah, so uh, we're going to get everybody to do their stats in the middle because it's fun um, mm -hmm. and everyone can laugh at terrible rolling. Who wants to go first? Who wants to go first? Rydian's in the chat. DM's cursed Rydian's in chat. Hey, Rydian. Hello. Hello. Shall I go um, first? Okay. Go on, Tom, you go first. He's go on. He's saying uh, point by supremacy. Point, point by a lot of people like because it allows for uh, actual specifically crafting the stats you want. But I like the idea of a bit of fate. randomness. Yeah. yeah. So first up, boom. So I take which one? You take away the lowest. Oh, so that first good. one is a 12. That's 12. A nice average number. And then Above you've got to do it five more times. 12, uh, 13. So 13. Nice. Sam is on tech duty today. Sam is on tech duty. Oh, Sam. that's not great. That is a nine. Mm, that's still better than a six. So <laughs> what's average? An average is 10. So think of a 10 as what a peasant would have in pretty much everything. That's pretty good, 15. 10 is plus Jeez. zero, so no modifier. Yeah. Oh, that's, that's, 14. Good. that's good. What are we up to? You're How many really you got? Well. 12, 13, 9, 15, 14. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Mm. One more. One more. And that is a 14 again. 14. That's pretty that's good. Nice. That's, that's nice and above really average in most things. That's a failed start. Um, that's so that's thing. a keeper. I, I tend to always get like really good. Like nine's not great, but even with like Reynard, I got really good rolls. Reynard's got really good stats. So what I did for my character in the private game. Mm -hmm. I just rolled three dice and then just took that. Oh, like really? So, because I, I think I rolled for him and I got like a 16, a 16, a 15, what? 15, 14, 14. And I just, in the end, Can just you decided. Roll mine? <laughs> <laughs> Do you really want him to? Maybe. <laughs> We're uncursed. Uh, who wants to go next? Let's roll for it. Pretty happy with that. <laughs> <laughs> go on, Kim. Can you reach? That no, one's too small. Too small. Oh, I'm just going to have to adjust my pants. Okay. <laughs> Do you want me to write these down for you, Kim? 18 is the best you can do. So roll 18. Uh, so that is a 10. That's average. That's average. I'll write these down for you. Oh. That is a 9. 9. Oh. This sucks! Well, if it goes too badly, then you can... Ah. Oh, that's good. All right, we'll keep that one. So that is a 16. 16. Nice. That's good. How many if times you, have if, I done it? Uh, you've done three, so three more. Three more. Oh my god. <laughs> you re-roll those. I'm not gonna keep them. Get it in the don't just no. go. That was a one. Yeah, keep that. Six, five, that is a one. twelve. Two more. Currently you will have to keep Ooh. these. Uh, wow. that is a fourteen. You have to keep these. Yep. So far it looks like unless you get some disastrous rolls now, you're gonna be keeping like these. One, stats. one, one, one. Oh no, that's uh, still alright. That's not alright, that's uh twelve. That is that is it. So that gives you a 10, 9, 16, 12, 14, and 12. Oh my I god! I want that one! Triple no, six. you yeah. rolled six! You Dang. rolled six! Too late. That is. <laughs> you've wasted that! You've wasted it! Wow! Yeah, Overhang to my one. No! <laughs> Jesus. I think we need a hashtag justice for Kim. There's no justice, you justice rolled six! Look, the chat, the chat wants it. The chat? No. no. no right. No. Fucking that is hell. Nine. Nine. So people We're are off to a flying start with me and my okay. coach. If it gets that bad, you get the standard raise. So. Yeah. Oh, that's awesome. man. I uh, suck. I hate so it. So 12. Uh, yep. Yeah, oh. Chat's going crazy for me right now. I'm just okay. saying. Sure they, because what you rolled is statistically ridiculous. 11. Poor Katie's not doing I well. hate life. You watch. There's going to be two 18s now. Oh, that's good. 17. <laughs> that's wow. Good. That's good, though. Two more. Well, yeah. I don't want it to be low. That is low. Ooh. That's oh, no that's 10. 10. 10. Still pretty trash. No, it's still right. Good. Don't forget, you'll get your racial bonuses and stuff as well. That is 12. Yeah. Is that it? Okay. Yeah. Yeah. That is it. So, and yeah, because you've got enough that's pluses the there. That's, that's a keeper, because it's only that you only had one negative, really. So, Can I have mine, please? Uh, so it's uh, 9, that's the 12, one, yeah. 11, 17, 17 17. 10, and then 12. I mean, if you're putting something like 17 in your decks, which is a monk as your primary That's stack, six. There's at least you get one, one ability, ability score, score increase as well. Kim, yours thing. was 10, 9, 16, 12, 14, and 12. So what kind of you and Katie have got very similar stats, but 
Katie's got one which is ever so slightly higher, but then you've got a 14 to balance it out. 18. Uh, you 18. didn't get an 18. People are rolling You didn't get the 18. Nice. 18. People say you should be allowed that I roll seven and get to choose. Do you want to go Tom no. or go? That's no! Yeah. Are you done? Are you yeah. done yours? People just want to favorite you. It's not that bad. They got straight it's 18. not that bad. Oh, yeah. No, I'm bad. saying no. No, no, no. no. Well, no. Six, 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 Chris never the beast. Shit. All right. Do you want me to write these down for me? Yeah, please. Oh, yeah. So Twelve. eight. Oh, no. Yeah, there's a six there. Twelve. Yeah, I've, I'm working it out. Okay. Oh, God, oh, that's good. You're doing really good. Sixteen. Sixteen. Crazy good. Uh, Eleven. You get a six in every roll, Hovind. <laughs> I know. So if, it, if the other ones are ones and twos, oh. no, it doesn't help. Oh. Seven. Seven. Ouch. Oh. <laughs> Honestly, Tom should not have rolled first. <laughs> I, nine. Nine. <laughs> oh, no. oh god. <laughs> hey, actually, it means that you'd be on standard array currently, unless you rolled an eighteen now. 11. Oh. I think that's it. You are on standard array, Mr. Chris Trot, which I believe is a 15, 14, <laughs> 13, a 12, time. a 10, and an 8. I kind of want to go with low stats, just for funsies. Well, you've got a 15 and a 14, will it be the two highest? So it's 15, 14, 13, 12, 10, and 8 is the standard array. 15. Because 14. you had a total modifier of. One. Oh. <laughs> All of your modifiers added together gave him plus one. Oh, so, wow. pretty bad. Um, Murder Buddy, I think, in chat <laughs> said that traditionally the seventh role is for hotness, so my character is super hot. Oh, sure. nice. You know what? You can have that one. I'll roll for that. You <laughs> sick, Hank. Oh. <laughs> he's, he's average. That's a ten. That's a nine. Your guy's not. Uh, he's big. That doesn't mean he's attractive. I'm not gonna roll. That's why oh, he's no. No. <laughs> And Katie's like, I'm, I'm good. Go on, Kate. I'm Chris. good. Go I'm on. Gonna go run. Go on. He has be... done some come concept on. art, and it's pretty hot. So I'm gonna not. Come on. It's not right. It can't be worse. Come on. Can't be worse than Tom's twos. Oh, based on Nina's <laughs> artwork, here we go. Based on Nina's artwork, it's pretty hot. There we go. What's that? It's, uh, oh no, hang on. I wanted to do. It's a 15. It's pretty hot. She's not as hot as me. I thought you were trying it's to get hot. boyfriend brownie points. No, it's six, six, not six. 18 hot, though. You're a super hot zombie T Rex. Right. <laughs> yeah. So, the stats there, so after you've rolled your initial stats, yes. um, you then want to assign them. Uh, to the attributes, uh, so strength, dex, constitution, intelligence, wisdom, and charisma, that you think represent the character. Now, you will get to increase these with races, with ability score increases at level four. Um, so you will get to increase these. The other thing to think about is... Your class. What I would say is, in theory, you shouldn't do this because you want to be true to the character, but you don't want to suck in combat. So make sure you've got a good stat in your class's primary stat. So for the monk, dexterity. For the paladin, strength slash charisma. For the rogue, dexterity. You know, for the, the blood hunter, I don't actually know what it is. Um, <laughs> it's not a class I know super well. Um, because again, like if you want a multi-class, maybe that has certain, uh, you know, elements to that. Like you might need to have certain uh, stats and certain things. Yoink. 15, 14, 13, 12, uh, 12 10, and 8. eight. Okay. Increases by two. So someone asked why I re-rolled after getting incredibly good rolls. Mm -hmm. And that's just because I don't really want to play a super, super powerful good. character. Were you okay? Because you wanted to play a bit of a useless character, didn't you? For Reynard, yeah. Yeah. Um, he ended up, I ended up sticking with his rolls. But, so in game, I sort of hindered him myself. Mm -hmm. So rather than him rolling really well, just sometimes I made him like panic or flee or do stupid things. Yeah. So that it sort of fit best with his character. Mm -hmm. um, and the same with the private game, because I rolled really, really well and just re-rolled it because I just didn't want a stupidly powerful character. Danny's yeah, like, in chat. Hi, Danny. Hello, Danny. Uh, when you get like 16s and stuff, yeah. Like if every stat has a 16 or a 17, it's like, yeah. I'm ridiculously good at everything. Because I'm a human, I get plus one to all my core stats. Well, I will let you choose between oh. the two variants. So you can either have plus one to all of your stats or plus two to two of your choice and a feat and an extra skill. Oh, I like the second option for a very specific reason. I know exactly why, you <laughs> little power gamer, you, Chris Trot. Don't think I'm not aware of what you're doing. So is it, you say two. So you get plus one plus to one. two stats of your choice. You get an extra skill proficiency and you may choose a feat. Feats is not something that a lot of people take because they're limited. Just thinking off the top of my head. Oh yeah, no, you definitely haven't got plans for certain feats. I come. 
Right. I'm thinking of having a big grip a, weapon. A two-handed weapon? A big two-handed weapon. Yeah, yeah. really? Yeah, and I'm mm. thinking a suitable feat would probably have that in the title. A great weapon. Master. That's it. Ah. Oh. <laughs> That sounds like a great If only feat. you had a class ability which like gave you a big bonus to hit as well to counteract oh. the, the penalty mm. you might have to take. I think there might be. No! I oh, think God. I'm no. Just, oh, God. Oh, God. You need to just make out already. Fuck! I mean, Max. It's, it's because Chris Trot has done some very quite in character min maxing because it does actually suit the type of character he wants to play. Um, <laughs> So, how do I work out my bonuses? So, uh, once you've placed the um, abilities into the whichever stats you want to place them in, uh, yeah. you'll then look up your uh, racial type, which I believe might even be in here for you. Oh, uh, that's I think called it is, Great yeah. Weapon Fighting. Great oh. Weapon Fighting. That's the fighting style, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah, that's um, fighting style is different to feats, though. Oh, yeah. Well, Great Weapon Master. There's a Paladin thing that's a uh, Great Weapon. So you get the base gnome traits, uh, Tom Hazel, and then yeah. your sub race is. Um, yes, yeah, so I'm, I'm not playing uh, a dwarf. I am a Snurf Neblin. A deep gnome. Snurf Neblin. So Snurf Neblin. Neblin is Snurf the correct Neblin. pronoun. Neblin. A, Neblin. a Snurf Neblin. 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 People are following like along, Neblin. and they've just rolled their stats. Neblin. Yes. And they've assigned them based on their class. Right. So you well, you assign them into the strength dex. Constitution, Intelligence, Wisdom, Charisma, with an idea of trying to favour what your class needs. Once you've done that, look up your race um, and you apply the relevant ability modifiers because like most races will have, say, elves get plus two to dexterity and then their sub races give them additional benefits as well. Yes. So yeah, you apply those right. to your stats. Yeah. Once you've done that, I personally recommend uh, working out your ability score modifiers. Um, and these are based, so if you have a 10 to an 11 in a stat, that is a plus zero bonus. If you have a 12 or 13, it's a plus one. If you have a 14, 15, it's plus two. If you have 16, 17, it's plus three. And then 18, 19 is plus four. What's the way of working out? It's like half plus. There is some way, yeah. I just remember it in that um, when you're going up into the positives, it's every new even number is an increase to the bonus yeah. modifier. Mm -hmm. When you're going below 10, it's each new odd it increases it by a, a further penalty. Okay. Um, so. Uh, also, because we're level six, you will get to do that later on. You get, a, a but let's do it as if we're making first level characters, okay. and then we'll level them up. Okay, that's the so, easier way of doing it. How I've assigned them is tell with, me with my human edition. Plus twos. Strength is sixteen. Yep. With a plus three modifier, my dex is the worst with eight. I feel like he's a lumbering. Well, I will tell you that there's some benefits to that. Like I kind of see it like yeah, he's not quick on his feet. But when if hits. you're wearing heavy armor, yeah. your dexterity modifier doesn't apply to your armor class. Oh, there you go. So you just get a set base AC. I knew that. I know you didn't, which is more important while I'm in. It's minus ten divided by two and round against the player. So that's how you work the modifier. That's a quick way of doing it. Yeah. I just remember minus it. Minus ten divided by <laughs> two. There is in the in the player's handbook there is a guide on how to do it as well. So yeah, sixteen minus ten. So six strength is sixteen. Yes. Yeah. Plus three. Okay. So okay. strength is sixteen. For sixteen. You. Eight dex. Fourteen constitution. Yeah, I feel it's a bit he's, tough. His survivability and endurance is yep. quite high. Intelligence of ten. It's average. Average. He's learned from. But he's also you know. kind of brainwashed and manipulated by the whole mm -hmm. wisdom order. Twelve. Okay. So he's so, got a bit of willpower there, and, like because of his belief. Yeah. And also just you know common sense and. Mm -hmm. Uh, wisdom is knowledge, isn't it? W wisdom is like common sense, um, how well you read situations, like your awareness Perception of what's going on around like you, yeah. how well you read. Intelligence is what you've learned. So yeah. it makes sense that you've got average intelligence, like especially if you're a human, you probably know pulled off the taught, farm. Yeah, yeah, you've been taught the life of a soldier or the life of a, a warrior priest. further knowledge than yeah. what Tempest gives me. Exactly. There you go. But which your wisdom is like, you've, especially because it counteracts like mind control, it's also like, no. Tempest will lead me. Yeah. Uh, and you're very so. And then charisma? 14. 14. So that's more of an intimidation mm -hmm. and military factor. Like he's bossed people around. Well, he's, he's, like, yeah, he's in command he's got and stuff. An aura about him mm -hmm. that's like, I will listen to this person. And because you're playing a paladin, strength and charisma are your two kind of primary stats. I'm so just trying to give a role play. No, no, I know it was, no, but it's, like I said, it's one of those things where I think you can get very caught up on this idea of like, no, I'm going to give my stats for the character, but you don't want to suck in the game as well. Like, it sucks some of the fun out of it. Um, so, okay, yeah. does that make sense? Pretty good. Um, Katie, have you assigned yours? Yeah, rough, rough. You can always change them, but yeah. But. So as a drow, you get plus two dexterity, and what else? I can't remember. Plus one charisma? I haven't looked it up yet. I haven't quite decided. If I'm you going to do half dry or dry. Oh, okay, nice. Okay. So, 
Yeah? Play around with it. Sure. I think Half Elf gives you plus two charisma, but then you get to do plus one in two other stats of your choice. Interesting. Um, which could be quite good for you because you've got quite a lot of odd numbers. Yeah, um, I do. I could put uh, But it depends on if you want to have this kind of. Because the half drow thing also means that perhaps there's, you know, you haven't necessarily grown up in the Underdark in very sort of like. I was more thinking hardcore. it might be a reason for her to be kicked out. Yeah. Then. Yeah, well, it would probably make sense as well because and the drow keep a lot of slave, and a lot of those slaves are used for sexy reasons <laughs> um, and could result in half drows. Yeah. Okay. Oh, okay. Half drow, half orc? Nope. Half drow, half flump? Tarant? Half mind flayer. <laughs> <laughs> half zombie T Rex? That's a half zombie threat. What about you, Tom Hazel? If you assigned your statisticos? Yes, so from being a gnome, I get plus two intelligence. Mm -hmm. It's pretty useless for me, really. But, um, well, not necessarily, because like, the idea of like, you know, thieves' tools, like decrypting yeah. stuff, could be, you know. Well, I always imagine he would be better at wisdom with perception. Yeah. Ooh, well, you can always put the, one of your lower stats in the intelligence one. You don't necessarily have to put one of your higher ones in there. It's true. Mm. Uh, I could, yeah, I could swap those around then. Okay, so. Because if you don't want him to be smart, just because gnomes are naturally smart doesn't mean your guy is the most well-learned one. Yeah, no, that's fair. I'll swap them around a little then. So in that case, I've now got a messy sheet. <laughs> uh, so Do I've you got, need an eraser? I've got another uh, sheet if you need one. It's cool. Well, it's in my notebook. I've got 12 strength. Okay. Uh, so I, I get no more bonuses after this point, after the ability. Uh, you will at level four, okay, potentially, so I, unless I you want to take a yet. feat. Yeah. So 12 strength, uh, 12 intelligence. Mm -hmm. Hold on a minute, these are not my rolls. 13 strength, 12 <laughs> intelligence, which it goes off. to 14. Mm -hmm. 9 constitution, because I just figured he wouldn't want to get hit too much. Um, 16 dexterity, which is a plus 1 from Deep Gnome. Mm -hmm. 14 charisma and 14 wisdom. Okay. So, so with yeah, the constitution being quite low, keep in mind that having a low constitution is often represented, you'd be quite kind of like not necessarily quite bulky, be quite thin, a bit sickly, that kind of thing. Or a dwarf. Um, well, he's a, he's a deep gnome. Deep gnome. So, I mean, a nine constitution is you are quite ill. Like, you're quite... Oh. Because it's all to do with your health. Constitution is what affects things like hit points. Um, and it's like how well you resist poisons. It means okay. that he'd have like a, quite a yeah weak stomach. He'd be a bit sort of like... A little bit sickly. Uh, okay. I mean, a little bit though. Like nine. Yeah, nine. But you, you think like less than an average person. Yeah. So like. So he'd have like a some sort of impedance. Yeah. Like you know maybe he like faints a lot. He's got like Shits a bad himself. circulation. Bad bowel control. Yeah. IBS. All right. He's got he's got a dicky ticker. Dicky ticker. <laughs> bit of a weak heart. Yes. Bit of a weak heart. Okay. okay. And he's farty. Okay. Dicky ticker. I'm gonna write Should be his name. So if you wanted him to be <laughs> a bit more, what I was gonna say is if you wanted him to be a bit more of uh, a bruiser. You could give him, you could put the 9 in the intelligence and then the um, the 12 in the constitution. Oh, okay. Because then the plus 2 would make him intelligence of 11, which means that he's as smart as a normal bloke. Yeah. Um, you know, he's maybe not the smartest, you know, chestnut or hazelnut on the block, Wee. but, you know, he's, uh, he's a bit of a more of a bruiser. But it would give him a bit more of a stronger constitution, make him a bit more of that kind of, like, hard man. You know, oh, if that's what you want it to be. Okay, in that case, yeah, 12. Is so I'm just trying to think about what you, the way you described him to me was a bit more of like a Phil Mitchell from EastEnders, like, don't you don't want to mess with me, I'll break yeah. your kneecaps. Okay, Danny right. Dyer. Yeah, right it's a bit of Danny Dyer. Right, you sick. Start again. Chris I'll start yeah. again. I'm going to re-roll. World's <laughs> most dangerous nose. <laughs> 15 decks, 14. Charisma. So I want yeah. 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 yeah, you want intimidation to be quite super high. high. Yeah. Your con influences your HP as well, so yeah, every level you'd be getting minus one. You get minus one. Thanks for that, yeah. um, But it's also just more like the way the character, the way that Tom kind of described the character, I, I didn't feel like he'd be quite a little weedy guy. He's yeah, more of a sort of hardy. Like, he's not necessarily a big bloke, but he's got a bit of... He can look after himself. He can look after himself. He needs yeah. to smash those kneecaps. Yeah, exactly. Hard. Like, yeah. He can't be a little wimpy. Yeah, I mean, like, strength determines, like, yeah, that, but constitution is like, you know, you imagine know, seeing... in his kneecap for me. Well, that's the thing. One thing I was thinking of was that he isn't actually the guy that gets in the fights himself. No. He has, like, a bruiser-type bodyguard, mm -hmm. like, this really dumb guy that's just like, oh, you fuck him up for me. Yeah. <laughs> and yeah. everyone thinks he's this really strong, tough guy, but he's just getting his bodyguards and his lackey. Yeah, to well, the mastermind him. works well with that as yeah. well, like, because he's very much about doing all of that. But yeah, it's up to you how you want to do the stats. It's just I felt like yeah, no, there's something to if make If I do it that of. way, all of my stats are above ten, so I'm happy yeah. with that. Nice. Okay. Kim, you figured out what you want to do? Okay. 
I need some help. Okay. Um, That's so why we're here. I've kind of figured out all the ASMR stuff, and apparently it is ASMR, according to chat. Let me check on D and D Beyond. Um, is it not in the front of the book as a pronunciation? As a pronunciation? Check the front of the book. We can come back to that. Uh, one thing I want to check is because I'm a fallen ASMR. Um, do I still get um, healing hands? What is that in the base ASMR? Thing? Yeah. If it's in the base one, then yes. And then it's okay. basically whatever it says in the base ASMR or ASMR have going to is what you get. And then you get the sub race one as well. Which is also a strength score plus okay. one. You ready? And necrotic shroud. Is it going to be Matthew Mercer telling us on yeah. D&D Beyond? Here we go. Oh, yeah. ASMR. Oh, it's Marisha. ASMR. 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 So it's English. ASMR. Don't say that. ASMR. 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 So, Thank like, you, yeah. Marisha. Thank you, Marisha and Ray. Ah, um, like, oh, Horlicks. Okay. Ah, oh, Horlicks. <laughs> Nobody will get that. Hey, Avril's in chat. <laughs> hey, Avril. Hello. Uh, I basically told her I was going to be Specimen 5, and no, uh, she's like number one fanu of Flux Buddies. Okay. And so as soon as I mentioned Specimen 5, she was like, I'll be there. I don't, I don't know what that is. Yeah, she will. <laughs> She'll love that I've embarrassed her. So... Um, okay, so on the Bloodhunter front, mm -hmm. uh, I've narrowed it down to two orders. Okay. Um, because uh, Order of the Profane Soul is essentially Warlock, and I started reading all the stuff about spells, and I just went, oh no, I've gone cross-eyed. <laughs> um, and then the Mutant one is essentially Alchemy, like, throwing... Like... Um, vials and vials stuff. and stuff. Yeah. Boring. Uh, so, oh. I am down to choosing between Order of the Ghost Slayer, which is essentially kind of like being a ghost. Like You can you do get things. like ghosty powers. Yeah, you can like turn into a spectre and pass through stuff. And, um, cool. you're, nice uh, and, and then blood curses can affect any creature. Yeah, you can affect undead with them and stuff like that. Yeah. People are saying to ghost slayer. Yeah. Yeah. Or there is the like the, the order of the light. which is werewolf buddy. Yeah. Where is he? I kind of the, the idea of an an Arsimar, um, oh. that is oh, also man. like a ghost and is like got mm. the cool wings and it's yeah. like very Diablo three, isn't it? Yeah. Like it's uh, what yeah. was it? What was the necromant? The 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 death. The expansion to Diablo 3, I can't remember the name Necromancy. of it. But there was the name for the Scourge of something like that? Oh, or... I don't know. Don't know. But yeah, like the, 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 that thing. Like it, it gives me those images of like the ghostly angels that will like pass through shit and oh, fuck yeah. up your crap. So basically, either I can be a blood hunter that is also a ghost, or a blood hunter that, that is also a, a werewolf. Being and a werewolf fights, you know, as a werewolf. Well, like they go very feral. Very like. Arr, 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 they've got like a berserk arr. ability. If they if they take yeah. damage, they might turn on then, whoever's yeah, closest bloodlust. to them. Um, so I can't decide, but I'm I am yeah, as much as I really want it to be a werewolf, and I think a werewolf with wings is cool. I think we're gonna go ghost because the, the visual that aesthetic is, cool. is pretty badass, isn't it? Yeah, like, but also like. Did you ever watch the cartoon Danny Phantom? No. Um, <laughs> Mouth Tom did. Malfail, yeah. Awesome. Going ghost! I just, <laughs> I just think... didn't expect that reference again. Uh, Tom Hazel, I'm a master of all cartoons. I, know. I should know this by now. <laughs> I've watched every cartoon. Go, 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 go. Someone, someone said here that if you go down, a, your ghost can pick up your weapons and fight for you. Yeah, that's a level... <laughs> that's pretty badass! That's 18. Awesome. Oh, yeah. that's level 18, that's so quite I don't, high level. I don't know if we'll get there. But still, but that's still, kind yeah. of... I want to play a blood so, fucking ghost slayer now. This so, is super yeah. badass. The ability is called Ventral Spirit. Upon reaching level 18, you learn to project your spirit to fight while on the edge of death. Whenever your points drop to zero, you can choose to let your soul emerge from your body to fight on. Your body remains unconscious and subject to uh, death saving throws as per normal. Um, and basically, yeah, your spirit picks up your weapons and stuff and just carries on fighting. And That's it feeds you cool. a healing potion. <laughs> <laughs> like an unseen soul, no. obviously. I imagine it would, if I was the DM, I would be like, no. Well, obviously. No. But I'm just saying. But th no, the thing is, is that would not, I would not CPR. be surprised <laughs> if that was slightly overlooked and it was like, oh yeah, I can just blah, 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 blah. It, it, it doesn't mention anything about that. It says that you have all the abilities, you can like pick up armor and weapons and blah. Um, so it says, if your spirit form takes any damage, 
your body die uh, or your body dies or you will gain any hit points, your spirit form vanishes. Okay. Oh, okay. So it's basically until you get hit, you can carry on fighting, basically. Yes. That's pretty cool. That's pretty badass. I um, like the idea of it. So yeah, I think Cat I'm likes, gonna go ghost, because as much as I like But the main thing there is right. Have a read through because I know with all the orders, it's very much dependent on like what happened to you. So like mm. maybe that's I related think. to how you died and why you came back, or maybe you didn't quite come back and now you have mm. ghost power. I think like ghost makes more sense than werewolf. The, I mean, the other thing is as well, because Blood Hunter relies so much on blood curses, the ability at level seven, Hallowed Veins, your blood curses now can affect any creature regardless of their form or lack of blood. Like I feel like we're going to be fighting a lot of undead. I don't know why you think that. And <laughs> undead, like, you know, I don't Dear really want to be like, blood dead curse! Dead. And you're like, uh, technically they don't have any blood, so it doesn't work. And I'm like, well, that's my whole class fucked. So, Just gonna yeah. make a quick note here make all monsters Living. golems. Nice. Constructs, everybody. Uh, so, yeah, I'm gonna be, uh, so, ghost, so, ghost so now that I've decided on that. I can start putting in stats. So it, it seems like... Well, the Blood Hunter should just have the same, it should use the same yeah, main stats. I think uh, it's probably combat ghost, stats. Ghost Dude mentions wisdom. Yep. So that's probably your, you probably want high strength or dex and then yeah. a high wisdom. That seems, main ones. Yeah, that, that seems to be the uh, thing. So if you come back to me, I will add... Okay. So once, once you've kind of got your main ability sorted and you've got your race, make sure you note down any racial features. So yeah. if you know what your race is going to be, like yours is human, it means you get to pick a skill proficiency and a feat. Um, if you know what those are, you can pick those now. I've got PDF uh, that does it for me. Tom, if you've got yours, then yeah, you're going to basically pick, uh, write down all of your racial features. Yeah. Um, anything like that that you get, you might as well write that down now. Katie, you're still deciding, or have you made um, it? Can I do like half elf? Drow. Yeah, you can be. Yeah, it's just you use half off stats, but you'd be half drow. So being drow, you have a sensitivity to sunlight, right? That's but being what, half elf, it would cancel it out. Yeah, being a half elf, I would say you wouldn't have that because you would have you know the surface. You gain all the benefits. More. What I might say like is drow. what we could probably do is maybe swap like one of the half elf abilities for like a drow ability or something. If you wanted to like have like the drow magic or something like that, or. Or if you just wanted to be, you can just play a half elf, and you just get the half elf. Because the half elf is pretty good. You still get like fey ancestry. You get like to pick skills that you're proficient you in. Still you get, get that dark as a drow, vision. Don't you? Um, yeah, that's what I mean. Like you still get those things as a drow. Yeah. So, but the thing with the being a half elf, the main thing you get is you get a more versatile ability score increase and the skill versatility as well. But you still have dark vision, so you'd still be pretty drowy. Have <laughs> oh, you got dark vision as well? Fine. Yep. Okay. I think once again, this is going to be a party of everybody has dark vision except Chris Trump. I've got superior dark vision. You do I've have superior dark vision. I've got 60 foot dark vision. Yeah. Um, I can see as a human. <laughs> I like colours. Yeah. I, li I don't like seeing in black and white. I've got three uh, colours. So superior <laughs> dark vision for a drow. Yeah, well this you'd have normal dark vision as a half drow. Here is what I'm thinking with my stats. Mm -hmm. Drow magic's pretty cool. uh, And this is with added like class and race bonuses. Strength 15, Dex 16, Constitution 10, Intelligence 9, Wisdom 12, and Charisma 14. Yeah, it's up to you how you want to play it. I might swap the Strength and Dex around. But... I'd say my general advice, and it depends on how you want to play it, like if you want to be super athletic and grace, graceful and stuff like that, then keep high in both. Mm. It's generally one of those things of, in terms of the raw mechanics of the game, you only really need one, because one will be what you fight with. Um, but again, it's like, if you kind of want to be Summer Glau from Firefly, where you're both strong and graceful and athletic, having high in both is good, because it means that you're good at stealth, you're good at agility, but you can also swim, climb, jump. Page 116 you can do all those things. Okay. Um, the other thing to think about is maybe swapping the charisma and wisdom, because if you said that Ghost Slayer has higher, needs higher wisdom, um, uh, charisma is only a 14 see, because I have plus two You have plus two because you're an yeah. arsimar. Yeah, that makes sense then. One, one, I six. mean, that's that's still good. It means that you have this kind of holy... <gasps> mm. Shit. And I thought like low constitution would be good because I'm a fucking ghost, yo. Yeah, sure. So I look a bit pale. Nice. Yes. <laughs> yeah, it's just... you. Yeah, well, so a 10 constitution is as healthy as yeah, yeah. we are, Which the three, really the mean. four of us are here. Yeah. So maybe Shrock because he works out. So yeah. And Katie because you work out. There's a half-elf variant thing in the Sword Coast Adventures. Oh, yeah. perfect. So it is. Half-elf of Drow Descent can choose Drow's Drow So magic. you just have Drow Magic. Okay. Which is just like... Do you a, get that? You can cast Darkness and then... You get stuff at high level. 
Oh, you forego skill versatility and instead take uh, take the elf trait king. Oh, yeah, and then you so you don't get to pick two skills you're proficient in as a half elf. Instead, you would gain drown magic. Right. So on half elf, uh, you wouldn't get this skill versatility. You'd get drown magic instead. You swap those. So you wouldn't have that. You'd get drown magic, which I think at level six gives you fairy fine darkness and um, dancing lights. Dancing lights. Dancing lights. People are suggesting that I swap one of my high stats for constitution. Well, no, but if you think about the way, think about what you want to play as a character. Thinking more about the sweet hit points. Sounds pretty meta gaming, but yeah, it's up to you. I got the hit points down. Don't worry. Okay. I'm, I'm the soaker. Um, I think I'm just used to like Kalar, just like ah. Yeah. <laughs> But no, I'd say that like I like the I like the idea that she's very strong and graceful and you know wise and beautiful. But yeah, maybe doesn't you know can't take a punch. Okay, yeah. it's up to you. So right, we just go out. spectral because I'm a ghost. HP. Right, we'll do that later. That's a, a thing to figure right, out later. The next thing now. is uh, most of you have got your classes worked out. Yes. So you want to work out. So with classes, this starts to determine your skill proficiencies, saving throw proficiencies, mm. and everything like that. Um, so we'll start with Chris Trot, who is a paladin. I can choose from one of the following, from Knight of the Order. Wait, that's paladin. Uh, so two from Athletics, Insight, Intimidation, Medicine, Persuasion, and Religion. Pick, pick those two. I have two. chosen Intimidation and Religion, surprisingly. Okay. Surprisingly. And um, Knight you... of the Order, mm -hmm. so that's like my background. Oh, you're going to pick your background, okay, yep. Which also in encourages mm -hmm. your skills. Uh, I, I was going to do backgrounds later, but that's fine. Okay. I can't no, I'm just fine, do it now. I kind of history, nature, and religion. I went with. Uh, well, you could take religion from Knight of the yeah, Order and, and then I've take another one persuasion from. Persuasion and athletics, I believe. So you've got athletics, intimidation, persuasion, religion. Okay. Perfect. Athletics came from Paladin. Mm -hmm. And so did And then persuasion. human, you get the other one. Knight of the Order, you get religion and. And then you took one as human. Yeah. Okay, perfect. And you've, have you marked down that you are proficient in wisdom and charisma saving throws? Yes. Excellent. So they are now a plus six and a plus seven. Okay, perfect. At this level. Yep, until six. we add it up and stuff like that. That's the sixth level, sorry, because yep. this is doing all for you. It's doing all for you. You also know that you've got uh, proficiency in all armor, shields, simple weapons, martial weapons. Um, so you've got all of those oh, yeah. as well. And then your class abilities at level one, and we will level you up. You've got divine sense and lay on hands, and you currently have no spell casting. So, yeah. And your proficiency Divine is sense two. is, uh, as an action, I can sense celestials, fiends, undead, consecrated and desecrated within 60 feet until my next turn. I sense a type and location if it is not behind total cover. Mm -hmm. And lay on hands is an action. I use the points in my pool to heal a touch living creature's hit points. I can neutralize poisons and diseases instead of, instead at a cost of five points per affliction. Yep, and it's uh, your paladin level times five is your pool total. So the Roman movement is five, but by the time it's level six, it'll be yeah. thirty. It'll be thirty. Me. Yeah. You're right. No, it'll be thirty-five. No, 20. six times five. Five times five, twenty-five. Yeah. Oh, six times five is yeah, thirty. Yeah, I was right the first time. Um, so, Katie, monk, yes. Oh. You are settled on monk. Yeah. Okay. So you are your proficient saving throw wise in strength and dexterity. So mark those just to know which ones you're proficient in. Your proficiency bonus at this level is plus two. Um, plus three. It will it go will up to be. plus three oh, okay. at six, yeah, so. Just you can, do it very lightly. Yeah. You get to choose two skills from acrobatics, athletics, history, insight, religion, and stealth. What matches your character. And then we'll also pick your background at some point as well. That was, that, mm. Probably don't need that book anymore. I uh, have decided to good. swap in constitution. Okay because people in chat very helpfully pointed out that being a blood hunter, I use my blood, kind of like Crown Rand. Yes, So to do. use blood magic, yeah. I have to knock down my health points. Okay. So, so which if I stat did higher, you, which one did you change I up? swapped around something, charisma, because you as in plus two. R smart, I get plus two. So you've got so. 12 constitution now? Uh, 14 constitution. Don't forget that 14 was because you had the plus two from ASMR, so it was a 12. No, no, I've counted all my, I've, I've moved a lot of things around. So I've got 12 strength, okay. 16 dex, 14 con, 9 intelligence, 12 wisdom, 
and uh, 12 charisma. And, okay. Sorry, 13 strength with them. Um, okay, yeah, with the, the plus and, one from and the... That works yeah, that's out. fine, because I, I figured if you still had the high strength, but yeah, that makes sense then. Yeah, so that makes me strong still. You're still fairly strong, yeah, stronger um, than average. Higher hit points, still dexterous. Pretty much uh, all round apart from intelligence, which is yeah. average. Yeah. Sounds like... Uh, What's your intelligence? You've not got that high. None of you have got high intelligence. Excellent. Uh, I've got 11. Ten. Yep, nine. all of you are 10 nines ten. or tens. Excellent. A bunch of dummies. <laughs> yeah. Well, I'm not dumb. I'd, I'd like just to think... Not smart. Just not, average. Yeah, not, just book, average. not book learned. We're just so like focused on being evil. Yeah. That, um, We're not we, you know, not we don't think about stuff. Not really evil. Don't, don't throw around the I E know. word. Uh, and it's the exact point in a kneecap to hit it. Just do the most pain, <laughs> and that's that's cool. all I need to know. Um, well, Katie, what? Uh, so, did you pick skills? Yes. Which ones did you go for? Stealth and athletics. Okay, and then did you pick a background? Yet? Nope. Are you having a breed through of what? I have not even options? thought vaguely about. Think about the character, the background of what that might be like. Like, Stim- Trot had the great idea of he was a member of this sacred order, Knight of the Order, and so Knight of, Knight of the Order, order makes order. perfect sense. Yeah. There yes. are more backgrounds in Sword Coast as well. They are start on page one two seven in the Player's Handbook, and then there are more in Sword Coast Adventurer's Guide, which I will fetch for you. So, oh, my background feature. Uh, you will want to have a think about. Actually, Tom, you pretty much want to go criminal, don't you? You are pretty much a criminal. Is there just a criminal There is a criminal background. Nice. So There straight up is, yeah, that's great. Is that in the player's handbook? That is in yeah. the player's handbook, yes. Okay. And then Kim, you will want to have a think about your what, what was your life before you became a blood hunter? That was pretty nice. Okay. That was probably um, pretty whoop. full on, oh. holy. Oh, all oh. of Yeah, well there's extra backgrounds there as well. So, cool, I'll go um, through that. If you're particularly holy, then acolyte might work, but you will need to think of a god that perhaps you want. Bob. Bob the God. Bob God. Uh, Bob God. Aser Ass- Serac. It's not God. A Serac. A Serac. What about Aserac? that Death God that was being made? Well, think. But you got to think. Why would your character have been a good Death God servant and then died and fallen and stuff? Death. No. I fucking love it, mate. Just have a think, mate. Have a think. <laughs> uh, Tom Hazel. Yes. Hello. Skills and um, <coughs> saving throws for you. Uh, yeah. You're a rock UA. Now, did you want to think about multiclassing? Is that something you, you wanted to explore? Uh, no, I think I'd prefer to be a better rogue than half a rogue, half a whatever. Um, I mean, yes, that's one way to think about it. I mean, it's just, you know, you don't necessarily have to be the best rogue. It depends on what you think the character represents. If you think that the character is, he's really fucking good at being a rogue, then that's fine. Yeah. If you think that he has a bit more of a bruiser in him, you don't have to be like the most optimal rogue. You can, mm. you know, have a few levels in fighter, and it will still give you lots of benefits. It gives you more hit points. It makes you better in combat. It gives you things like fighting style and second wind and action surge and stuff like that. Okay. Yeah. So there is you. It, you will gain. You'll make up for the the loss in rogue levels for you know not classing out of them. It's it's what the character is about more than anything. So, if you don't think that that represents the character, then that's fine. But I don't want mm. you to take it because you think, oh, it's not going to be as powerful or as as optimal. No, I think, I think the sneaky like the fight is good and everything, but it seems to you'd rather be more like you know the kneecaps thing is him doing sneak attack rather than yeah. actually being a bruiser. Okay. Yeah. Well, I, in that case, so as a rogue, um, you should probably note down somewhere you are proficient in light armor. Uh, okay. Uh, light, armor. You also have proficiency in simple weapons. And I spelled armor wrong. Uh, simple weapons. Hand crossbows. Oh, simple weapons. Uh, hand cross. Are you going to do this for everything you write? Bows. <laughs> long swords. Long. Yes, is the answer. Swords. Rapiers. Oh, are these not like martial weapons or anything like that? Uh, you don't just get all martial weapons now, which is why I'm reading them out individually. Okay, rapiers. Short swords. Yeah. And thieves tools. And thieves tools, okay. You're proficient in dexterity and intelligence saving throws. Uh, so dexterity. Just mark those off on the sheet. Like and which one intelligence. You're and then you get to pick four from the following list. Oh! Acrobatics, oh. athletics, Deception, insight, intimidation, investigation, perception, performance, persuasion, sleight of hand, and Bloody stealth. Hell. It's wow. in the player's handbook uh, on page 95 if you would like to have a consideration. 
I will. That's a lot. That's a lot of stuff. A lot of skills to pick from. So and your background will add even more. In fact, if you certainly want to be a criminal background, we can do that now. Okay. Um, because the criminal is pretty simple. Uh, uh, yeah. Deception and stealth. Deception and stealth. They get um, that straight you away. also get a type of gaming set that you're proficient Ooh. in, such as dice or cards. Dice. People that have been making characters, can you just give me a summary of what you've done so far in chat? I want to know what, what you've done. What you've done. Um, you also have a criminal contact as your class feature, as your background feature, I should say. What is your background feature as a knight of the order? Uh, military rank. So you have a military rank within very anything. similar to Makes sense to what you had, like a captain hood or yeah. something like that. And I've actually filled in my personality bomb. Ooh, here. good boy. My head. Good it's boy. mostly because of my auto-filling PDF. <laughs> have you filled in your personality trait, ideal bond, etc.? That's, That's what I meant. I've done all that. You actually just pick the ones from the drop down. Ah, Simar Warlock. Someone is. Lizard Folk, Barbarian, Ranger. Lizard Folk! Slash Ranger. Lizard Folk! Nice. They are great. Eat the dead. Half dinosaur, half dragon paladin. Cool. That's well, interesting. They got to be a dinosaur. Morally questionable or of the immortal half orc mystic <laughs> that used to be a criminal. A ridiculously powerful 12 year old gnome wizard. <laughs> nice. Some good stuff in chat. Uh, so um, I'll wait until we get to that. Well, one thing I can do for you, Chris Trot, Go on. Is I can roll you a magic item. Or you can actually start leveling yourself up as well with your fancy PDF sheet. Um, Guess what? Are you oh, going to yeah. take an ability score increase at level four? Or no, are you going to take a feat? feat? Well, you got a feat already. I did get a feat already. Oh! You get another feat. Do I get another feat or shall I improve? I don't know, it's up to you. I'll Meanwhile, have at, I'll have a look at feet. I'm going to roll a free magic item. Because they're level six, um, each character is basically pl starting off as a infamous or famous adventurer or position of thing. So I'm actually going to roll a random magic item from a list for each of you. Excellent. Chat, help me. Shall I get a feat? Ooh. And what feat should I get? Or should I go for... This is for Chris Trot. I'm just going to read what it does, because I want to make sure... Lucky that... best feat. <laughs> Lucky is an incredible feat. It is perhaps the one that powers. Like, something yeah. that suits this Paladin character. Um, use... Maybe, like, heavy armor mastery or something like that? Like, if he's meant to be this big fucking walking tank of death. Lucky. I'm not saying lucky. It's a good thing to have. Do so, I have a horse? My... Skill proficiencies, that was for Rogue. It is MP. That was for Rogue, yes. Fully automated character generator, that is what I'm using. On DM's Guild. Look at uh, Unearthed Arcana feats. Should I do that? Or should I stick with PHB stuff? Uh, feats, please stick to PHB okay. or Sword Coast. Um, Unearthed Arcana has a lot of crazy feats. Heavy cool. Armor Master. Um, so, my criminal background gives me two skill proficiencies. Is that on top of my four from being a rogue? So the criminal background gives you deception and stealth, yeah. and then you get to pick four more from the rogue. So I have six in total. Oh, oh molly. Yeah. Yep. Ro rogues are all about that shit. Yeah, I'm going to stick with them. Um... <laughs> I am rolling. So I rolled a plus one weapon for you. Thank you. That you start off with. Is but now I'm rolling on the kind of like, there's a lovely little table in the DMG, which lets you kind of like add little details to uh, magic items. Interesting. So far, uh, the item incorporates imagery of death such as bone skulls that might be crafted from parts of corpses. That was what I rolled for who created it. Uh, then I rolled on the what is a detail from its history. S uh, this was sinister. The item is linked to a deed of great evil, such as a massacre or an assassination. It might have a name or be closely associated with a villain who used it. Anyone familiar with the item's history is likely to treat it with its owner with suspicion. And I call it Flumpf. <laughs> um, I will roll its random minor property. It literally looks like Frostmourne, is all he's saying. Uh, the item never gets dirty, no matter That's what. That's pretty cool. And then a d12. The blood runs from it. Six. It's just constantly dripping with blood. <laughs> I could so do. the item makes a loud noise when used. I will let you decide the noise. A <laughs> wailing. <laughs> no, it's not. Like no. a wailing scream or something, perhaps? Yes. You know, in Diablo 2, when you kill those wraith Give me an ladies, example, please. I can't, literally can't make that noise. Okay, what is it? But it's like a blood curdling <laughs> distant scream. Like a Nazgul screech kind yeah. of thing. So every time, every time but you swing like that a, sword, it makes that noise. Yeah. Um, so come up with a name for this cool sword. Um, I'm going to make some notes on what I've just rolled. Um, Katie, how are you getting on? I am finding a background that sort of suits. Have you ever looked in these yeah, ones? Yeah, I've had a look everywhere. 
What kind of what kind of background do you would you like? So we can make one. What kind of life did your your half drow monk lead? I don't think she's going to be a worshipper of love. Okay. So it could be. So maybe we could go with something like exile or something like that. Or yeah, that's something like that might be good. Mm Mhm. And then we can probably reflavor one of the existing ones or something like that. So I was looking at charlatan, and it's like you have a way with people, and that could be quite interesting Mm -hmm. for her. But it's it's not bluffed away. It's not quite right. It's like charlatan hermit in a weird way. I don't Mm -hmm. know. I heard like, it's quite an interesting one, but I think like the thing with Hermit is like it has this whole thing about like oh you know this great secret. Um, I'm trying to think about, I'm sure there was another one in. Um... Like she's a monk. So well, she the other one is like sick. maybe courtier, but we could kind of rephrase it a little bit because the Drow have these like great houses, um, mm-hmm. and you could have perhaps like learned like how to deal with people, and you kind of learn languages from all these visitors, like maybe you were used as like a liaison between the surface world and the Underdark and that kind of thing. Um, And so kind of you learn how to conduct yourself in a very kind of prim and proper way, but not being noble yourself. Like you kind of learn the ways of court treachery um, through these ancient drow houses. Um, And that's another thing to think about as well is have a think about um, who might be after your character as well. Like who might be, you know, if you guys are all infamous or have dark pasts, it's likely that you've upset people in the past perhaps. And you might have people, so for yours, Kate, it could be the house that you once served kind of want you dead, or it could be the another house you uncovered some sort of plot that they were up to and they you kind of uncovered that plot. Um, Courtier is uh, here in Sword Coast. But think about, you could refra- reflavor it in a sense. Um, I'm just going to write down your sinister, sto- sinister sword or sinister weapon. Is it a great sword, yeah? Me? Yeah, it was a great yes. sword, right? I'm thinking of like a single word for it, like remorse. Remorse. Justice. It is my remorse. <laughs> <laughs> uh, undead looking, sinister past. Or wrath or something like that. Something edgy, edgelord. Never gets dirty. <laughs> Reaper. The unyielding. Oathbreaker. Oathbreaker. And makes a loud sound every Lord time it's used. It. Let's see if I can find that sound. Wrath Snaggler. Someone says you should call it Meme. Meme! Jimmy Rustler. Um, how are you getting on, Tom? I'm good. I've got my... Uh, you got your skills? Skills. I've got my saving throw. Tell me of your skills. So, uh, I got Deception and Stealth from being a criminal. Mm-hmm. I also picked Acrobatics. Mm-hmm. Uh, insight, intimidation, which was my main one, mm-hmm. uh, and sleight of hand. Okay, so a little bit of pickpocket <clears throat> in. Well, I figured he rose through the ranks, not necessarily from kneecapping like I wanted him to, but being but like a cat burglar. Mm-hmm. He's a small guy. Mm-hmm. He can sneak into small little places, hide. He, can, he has, has, a, has an ability where he can uh, stealth in rocks. He gets an advantage on that. Because he's rocky himself. He's, he's rocky like... faced. Yeah. So um, he's yeah very cat burglary sort of. Cut purse type, type rogue. Mm-hmm. Uh, okay. So those are the ones I've gone for. Perfect. Um, so once you've picked all of those kind of things, it's mainly going through your class features, mm. um, noting all of those down. Um, what I would say is the same thing as Trot. You're kind of at the stage now where you've kind of got all the basics. So start looking at leveling yourself up, and we'll do hit points uh, in a second as a group because it's kind of easy to do those yeah. with everyone together. Okay. Um, so at level four you get a thing called ability score increase, which means you can either choose one stat to increase by plus two, Mm. two stats to increase by plus one, or you can choose to take a feat out of the player's handbook. You can have either one of those three things. Okay, I've got, uh, like he had a lot of odd numbers. So if I was to add plus one to those, it it would potentially push Um, out. Or you can add plus two to a single one. And the feats, there's a big old list of them. I can't there's remember a lot which of stuff. Okay. Yeah, there's a lot. Kim, I might see if I where are you at? So I'm thinking either Acolyte or okay. Far Traveller. Okay. But give, um, give me the reasoning for these. So give, Acolyte, give me the story. I mean, Acolyte is kind of obvious because it's all about, you know, you, you have spent your temple. life in a service of a temple or a god, and that is essentially what an Ars Amar is. Mm. Um, Ars Amar. So... You know, that kind of works for a whole bunch of reasons. And I was thinking, um, you know, obviously, I am a fallen arsmer. 
mm. and I could have been killed by the um, my fellow acolytes because reason Why? X. Um, reason, r- mysterious reason that yeah, you don't know yet. That I will figure out between okay. now and whenever and, we, we yeah. do this. And then Far Traveller, I was thinking, because, well, I've obviously come from the celestial play. Like, so that would be more like I've been exiled. And I think because there is an okay. exile. I mean, you, yeah, I mean, like, well. Um, the thing that spoke to me was that Far Traveller, you, you can take like a musical instrument. And I just had this idea of my arsenal just, you know, sadly playing. Okay. So the thing with this is like, yeah, what I would say is perhaps you lived on, you are, you are from another plane. You are mm. not from the material plane. You lived in, you know, Arborea or whatever mm. plane we want to come up with. <laughs> um, and you were obviously living there. You were probably somehow killed and perhaps something on the material plane brought you back and that's mm. why you've appeared here. Mm-hmm. Um, and then ever since you've kind of been wondering, trying to figure out, you know, what happened, but also probably being angry at things that maybe killed you or something like yeah. that. Um, I mean, because like the kind of the, the kind of funny idea I had was um, I was listening. <laughs> okay, they don't sound exactly like how I thought. <laughs> I was listening to um, a podcast today about, I think it's, he's called Alistair Crowley, but basically he's this uh, English rich dude during Victorian mm-hmm. times, yeah. who, like all English rich dudes uh, in Victorian times, uh, spent his time setting up various cults and like being a member of various cults, mm-hmm. and um, he's known for kind of satanic cults and stuff like that. And I thought, wouldn't it be funny if I was a character who just like was just setting up cults everywhere and didn't particularly believe in any of them, but was mm. just like, you know, oh, we should like totally do a blood sacrifice right now, and then like you, disciple, you could, uh, you know, get to level twenty-two do, if you. Do you, you want to play that form. character just to be funny, or because there's a cool character that you think that there's a cool character story there that you can build upon? Well, I think there could be definitely something like you okay. know she's um, kind of I don't know she's trying to make up for a, a lack of something or I don't know like. Um, that's the, that's that's my only question with that is is it's all. Sometimes it's like, I think Uncharted Territory was like, yeah, we can, like, it, it kind of had that kind of uncharted, you can play just a funny concept and not worry about the bigger thing. But I think this is a good opportunity to have, like, as long as you've got the story there, mm. I think that that works. The other thing I'd say is, as you're playing an R um, have a think about, have a flip through maybe of some of these gods as well. Mm. Um, because if you were to play an Acolyte, or even if you just have, like, a planar being, because the thing is, is it's... Planar beings aren't necessarily always tied to the gods. They are just planar beings, like mm-hmm. these kind of divine creatures. Mm-hmm. But they don't necessarily have to be in the service of a specific god, but they can be. Okay. So you can have a flick through and see if there's like, oh yeah, shit, like Helm, that's a pretty fucking good god, like god of like all this nice stuff. It'd be interesting if you were a falling ASMR mm. who once served like a being, like a servant of Helm or something like that. Um, and um, all the gods are in this Sword Coast Adventures yeah. book as well, so they're I all in there. I think, to be honest, for uh, background, I think I need to go away and okay. um, yeah, that's fine. read up on gods yeah, a bit that's more fine. and uh, ask Have a think about that. The main thing, and... um, just remember that you'll get some extra skill proficiency, yeah, so we need to yeah. go back and add those in. Um, in that case, start looking at things like, have you looked at your Bloodhunter class, what skills you can pick from, yeah, and proficiencies I've, uh, and stuff? So I've gone, so I get um, saving throws, I'm proficient in strength and wisdom saving throws. Mm-hmm. Uh, I've picked athletics and insight to be proficient in, but that may change depending on mm-hmm. Um, the, the background my background because mm-hmm. um, I think like Acolyte is proficient in insight and stuff yeah, like that yeah you keep so double up I always say it. like just pick a different one yeah okay perfect uh, yeah alright so, okay Katie you've made us any decisions are you still thinking Frontier. okay you're gonna go with that yeah I think that kind of works in and like then it... I'm gonna work out my backstory from the ideas that I've gathered yeah. so with the backstory, if you have answers to these now, great. If you don't, have go away and have a think about them and let me know in an email. Um, the main things I was thinking is, yeah, have a think about how did you die and who brought you back? Um, do you have anybody you, you care about? Like, just because you're playing a bad character doesn't mean you don't have a family that you actually give a shit about. It doesn't mean that you don't have a friend that once saved your life or helped you out. Um, are there any groups or individuals out there who are after you for any reason? And then what is your greatest accomplishment so far? Um, I just want you to have a think about those kind of questions because I think that that can give you some interesting things to work around with. Gives me interesting things to add into the story as well. Um, You know, friends getting in certain situations or maybe groups being sent after you and that sort of thing. Um, And it also just gives you some things to build around. Can you repeat all the things? 
I will ha I will email this round, but it's uh, what's your greatest accomplishment? Yeah. Are there any groups or individuals after you? Yeah. Do you have anyone you care about? How did you die and who brought you back? Okay. I know with you, yours was kind of loosely based on this idea that um, the Order of the Steel Fang let me down and I got butchered to death by Grungs. Insert enemy here. Was killed by... Foil snails. Enemy. And then we're still figuring out exactly how you were brought back. Yeah. I feel like I don't know. Okay, that's interesting. So you and just woke up one day. while I was under this possession, I didn't understand. Well, you don't need that. That was just an idea. It doesn't even have to well, be that. Like you, you could just be, you just woke up. I feel like, like, you know, while life. I was brought back, there was a period of time where I was As used. far as your character knows, you don't know anything. Yeah, I don't know You're anything. Like, you, would, you died. You were ascending up to serve Tempest. But then I was brought back. And then you well, ugh, woke up. Clearly, Tempest gives me a purpose to live. He still gives you strength. Yeah. There's a reason I'm here, and there must be something to vanquish. Mm. Okay, uh, that's interesting. That's the only reason I'm alive still. Not known. Okay. Kill the fluffs. Kill the fluffs. And yeah, like I think the main thing for you is think about like any allies and stuff like that that you might still have. Um, I think an old war comrade. Old war the comrade. The only person I respected in this army, uh, and I, I've not. Did seen they him. have the same kind of blood thirst? Blood I think thirst? we both encouraged each other to separate ourselves from the Order of the Steel Fang. But in that heated battle, I got split off from him or her, and I was butchered to death. And ever since I've been back, no idea where they are. You don't know where they are. Okay, interesting. Yeah, that gives me some cool stuff to work with. Um, okay. Any ideas for any of you guys? Like, have you guys got any rough ideas, like more detailed characters stuff? I that think you want to I out? need to go away. That's fine. Because well, you, yeah, you, I didn't you figure didn't out even race have. until yeah. today, yeah, so I think now that I have that, I can. I'll, okay. I'll do it tomorrow, and that's I will fine. email you. So who, who killed me? So things like, yeah, how did you die? Mm -hmm. How did you get brought back? So yours could be something as simple as like the guild was like, no, he's not done. Bring him back. Like, yeah, I don't or, know. Like, I was, I was kind or of... he sequenced a money away somehow and paid for it. Like in his will, he was like, go to this location, use the money to bring me back to life or something like oh. that. Ooh, like Scrooge McDuck. That's pretty cool. Yeah. Or maybe, maybe he kept a load of money hidden away and he's been brought back because they want him to... They want the, the money, like the old, uh, he's got yeah, the treasure yeah. map, like yeah. he's the only one, he, he knows where map. Grunhold's <laughs> gold or something is buried. Yeah, that's pretty The treasure cool. map is in my mind. That's you not, know, a, get that's it, not a conventional death. death. Yeah. yeah. So, spoilers, so, you already what, spent it all! So was, <laughs> do you reckon this was your own guild that's turned on you or a rival that's trying to get mm. the money out of you? So he could have either been killed by a fucking snitch, <laughs> or, I don't know, like, I'll need to think about yeah. How and why he is deaded, deaded up. So you were brought back to like the idea of reveal. Being killed by your own people, like yeah. someone in your line that was working against you. Or well, maybe like me and the partner were working towards like the same heist sort of thing. Yeah. And he killed me before we got to the yeah before we got to the actual main source of the gold. Or you or no or he found out that you got there before him, like you stabbed him in the back. And you got there and took it all, and a so he, like, sent, he sent assassins after nice. you or something like that. But then it was like, shit, I, I knew I where, where it was. Is. Yeah, and so yeah. he's Let's like resurrected back. you and you've escaped. So part an ex-partner. Okay, ex-partner. Ex cool. I like that. Partner in crime. No and the thing is as well is, it kind of makes you both the bad guy because you stabbed him in the back first, but then yeah. he he literally had people murder you. Yeah, it make, it, it makes sense that I was I killed like off. Okay, I can't hate him for it because I would have done the same to him. Any ideas, Katie? Are you gonna figure stuff out? Probably figure stuff out. That's but fine. Maybe um, the whole mixed heritage thing. Like, like some, killed by the drow. Some because, racist drow, yeah. like the filthy half drow. So I really don't like yeah. the drow. Okay. But it's awkward because I look more drow than, than half elf. Yeah. yeah. Oh, than elf. Half drow racism. Potentially. Yes. Potentially. I don't I'll, know. I'll, I'll, this is all There's, just notes. Yeah. So it's like you're out. But I don't know how I would be brought back. I need, mean, yeah, I don't well, know. There's I... a way of coming back and then somehow getting into the way of the long death monks and training, mm -hmm. potentially, Possibly. Yeah. Maybe but you... I, don't, I haven't quite... Um, there's always things like, there are actually like drow gods and goddesses that aren't Lolth, and they're kind of constantly working against the Spider Queen, and they're constantly trying to get agents 
that kind of oppose her and have reasons to not like Lolf. Um, so it could be that perhaps like you kind of, again, like Trot's character, you woke up not knowing, but you've kind of felt this weird presence or something like following yeah. you around. Um, have a think about it, we you see what you want. Um, feel free to level your guys up to level six now. Uh, How just are we go doing through. HP then? So HPs, um, let's are roll it. Rolling or are we taking let's roll it, but I will do my house rule of if you roll a one or a two, you can take um, the average. Just before we do that, I have a choice between a feat or an ability score, and the feat I would take without roll reading the rest of them would be like Sferf Neblin Magic. Is that you want to take the, the feat of Sferf Neblin? Yeah, so sure. he gets the innate <laughs> spellcasting ability of your ancestors. This ability allows you to cast non-detection on yourself at will without yep. reading material component. And I can also cast Blindness slash Death, Blur, Disguise Self, or once uh, a day. Once a day, and it doesn't cost me uh, spell nope. slots or anything. Um, and I just need a long rest to recover that. Sure. Which is pretty if that's cool. what you want to take instead. But also at the same time, ability scores. Always good. Have a think. Yep. Um, so, HP, let's roll it, but if you roll one or two, you can take the half. So that means that there's a little bit of risk. You might get a three or four or something like that. Oh. You'll be fine. You might roll above average. You don't know. You don't know. Fuck it, let's do it. Can you remind me? Yes. You know all the base stats. What what is it that it adds? Like so, fourteen is a plus two. Fourteen plus two. Sixteen is a plus, plus three. three. Yep. Uh, thirteen is a plus one, isn't plus it? Plus one. Uh, nine is a minus, minus one. one. Twelve and twelve, 12 is both a plus one. Plus one. Yes. Yeah. And then at level at level four, you can choose to potentially increase some of those. Ah, oh, okay. Level so at level four, you get ability score improvement. So you can either add plus two to a single stat or plus one to two different stats. I'm going to increase my strength then and my intelligence because they're both on odds. Okay. So yeah, they go up. So I'll bring it up to even. So you go fourteen so, and ten. Uh, so your first level, you get maximum on the dice. So 10. So plus your constitution modifier. 12. So you're at 12, and then you roll that, and then add your constitution modifier. And if 12. you roll a one or a two, you get the average. This is level three. Two. This is level two. Level two. <laughs> That's, this isn't actually straight as well. Oh, can we get the dice cam up as well, Sam, if you're around? Uh, it's not going to move from that spot, right, Mark? See, I'm not going to move it. So 10 plus. He's gonna try. So re-roll that one because that was probably angled. Oh, that box so it zooms it. There, there we go. Thanks, Sam. So level two. It's gonna trigger me. <laughs> you said it wasn't gonna move, Chris Trot. Well, no, it's You're not. a liar. It's done the zoom. It's fine. Okay. Uh, so level, level two. two. Same number. Same. Plus Got constitution three, modifier. So it's five. Okay. So Can it's level you two. Do this for me. Yeah. So, so start off as twelve. So you added, so it was 12, so you add 5, 17. Now add Ooh. 8. 8, that's 25. 11. That's 36. 6. That's 42. Last one. 8. Not bad. 50. Bang on. 50. 50 maximum hitch points, and so you are 60 average, tens. According to this PDF, it's 49.5. So I've got a very average HP. There you go. You can do it, Katie. I don't think I can. Do you want to use my dice? 50. So. I'm pretty happy with that. What is your uh, level one? So your constitution modifier is a 12, uh, it's 12, so it's plus one. Yeah. So you start off with nine at level one. See. Well, I got threes. So that's. Four. Let me just work this out. Are you adding con? There's no con. There is con. There is plus one. So that was a uh, six. six. Yeah. Six, so four, six. 19 currently. Oh, nice. Nine. Nine. That's a 28. Five. That's a 33. Uh, that's a two, so you can take the average. So that's uh, what's the average of five? Six, because of my yeah. con. Six. So you are at 39 total. That was all six. Nice. And six, and don't forget your hit dice is Wait, 60, 10. Would, but if I, do we get ability score improvements though? Would you? Would you increase your constitution modifier? I'm, I don't know, I might. If you do, then you basically add two extra HP. No, just, You'd have to up it, your con. You'd have to, well, if you up your con by plus two, that'd increase it by plus yeah. one, and that's two levels since you gained that level, mm. or three, so you'd gain, so four, five, and six, you'd gain three extra HP. But if you're not going to increase it, it's just 39. Is hit dice by your class? 
Yes. Yeah. So yeah. Rose is D8, mate. Yeah, sweet. So what's your constitution modifier? Mine, uh, plus one. Okay, so you start off with nine. Okay. Let's do this. It's definitely a D10 we're rolling, guys. One out of D8. Six. So Any con one? mod? Let's see, yeah, plus one with the con mod. Okay. So you're at 16. Five. That's 21. Seven. Seven. Oh. Two. <laughs> That's you take the average. average. So uh, average five. is five, so it becomes a six. Cool. That's six a two, so you yeah. take the average. Uh, that was the last one you needed to roll. You're at 40. 40? 40. 40 maximum HPs. God damn. So you've got one above KT. And then on a blood hunter, what is the hit dice type? D10. D10. You're gonna have to. Do you wanna, <laughs> I'm have to lean over. D10, and then it's. So my what's your con? Is plus three. Plus three, your con. Yeah. yeah. Is that after your ability score improvement? Uh, no, I swapped my highest stat with my strength. So the highest thing I rolled was a sixteen. So you put so that I in made constitution. That my con. Okay. And okay. then I put four. Uh, I think At level four. I think I put 12, in, I put 12 into strength. Which made it a 13. Plus a one for Blood Hunter. And then at level four, you increased it again. Increased That's fine, again. as long as it doesn't affect okay. your constitution. I worked it so out, it's fine. You have 13 HP to start with, because it's 10 plus your con mod. Yes. Um, so level two, it's whatever you roll plus three. Oh. That's a one, so you take the average, uh, which on a D10 is a? Uh, seven. Uh, let me find out. <laughs> Uh, is a six, in fact. So that's a nine for you, which gives you 22 max. All right, next one. That is six. a six, it's a nine. That's 31. Oh, apparently um, the Sorry. average. Well, well there's only one person saying it, but Katie took the average No, we did it right. If we're including our proficient, our oh, yeah. bonuses. Uh, two more. Eight. Ooh, that's Ooh. pretty good. That's an 11. She's gonna have more HP than you. Chris Trot. Right, ten. <gasps> that is sixty-four HP what? for the Blood Hunter. Oh. However, I imagine you might have a higher AC if oh. you go. Actually, no. Just... AC is eighteen if I'm going plate. Yeah, if you go plate, I don't know what type of armor Kim's going to wear. Initiative. Nothing. Initiative is dexterity modifier unless you take a feat which increases it. I will double check. Oh, a feat. Yeah. Got oh, no. a very creepy chair. You do have a creepy chair. Initiative is the one I always forget because it doesn't come up in the book. Yeah, it's just, I always <laughs> it forget just AC. dexterity. Um, so AC is based on the armor you're wearing. Yes, so now is equipment and stuff like that. Um, you have a two-handed sword, which we've said is plus one. Correct. Don't forget you get to add the plus one to hit and damage rolls. So I will make that, it's now a plus seven. You need to come up with a cool name. Um, Someone your proficiency cannot... bonus is plus three, by the way, for all of you at level six. Yeah. Um, proficiency plus three. So I have... We're level six, aren't we? Yes. I have expertise, so I can increase. So you double your proficiency bonus in two skills, and I think you get to add more later on as well. Four skills. Four skills. Level six, yeah. You are skill king. Oh, man. Welcome to the wonderful world of rogues, Tom uh, Hazel. Or thieves tools. So yes, or thieves, thieves tools, tools, I guess, lockpicks. Lockpicks. Um, and disarming traps, stuff like that. Interesting, interesting. I'd like to thank everyone in chat for reminding me about Blood Hunter's uh, hit points and using hit points to do my, my fighting. So, otherwise, I mean, it would have been an interesting, like, there's a high risk to using your power. Yeah, I faint every time I use yeah. my blood. Uh, oh, God! <laughs> um, but no, it's cool. My phone is on fire. Is it really hot? Yeah, I think it's about to explode. It's probably Twitch. Let's not do that. Mine's fine. Um, so, someone came up with a good name. For my weapon. Did they? Uh, Good. It was. Next thing to think about, there is a few more stats and stuff. We need to pick equipment, um, oh, yeah. and I'm going to give you guys some magic items. In terms of things like armor and equipment, you guys can have whatever armor and as much equipment as you like. Plate. Because you guys are. Do you really want to wear a plate as a rogue? <laughs> You'd be so noisy. I've got advantage. Where is he? In climb, stone climb, climb. areas. We're going to be alone in a lot of stony areas. You'd be right? the loudest rogue there ever was. Boom, boom, bing, bong, ding, dang, clang. Where is that rogue? Um, <laughs> clank, clank, clank. Clank, clank, clank. Maybe I won't. Know. We've got a few more steps, but we are running a little bit out of time because we've only got like 30 minutes left or so. Whoever said grief. Grief. Nice. Grief's a good word. Grief. Uh, I think it grief. began with a V, the person began with a V. Uh, so, grief. Um, okay, well, you write it down. Yes, um, let me your sword. So, 
Trot's got a magic weapon, is that? I'm going to give you guys all magic weapons. The other thing I would like you to think about is, um, I'd like you to think about how possibly you might know each other as well. Ah. Um, think about things like, you know, have your paths crossed? Have you, do you, you know, are you somehow connected in some way? Have, you know, think about that. Because it's always good to kind of have it start like you guys had with Kalar and Six mm. and Cromsby and Fia. Um, having those little connections can help a little bit. Um, I don't think I'd know anyone. Vassalar, thank you, Vassalar. Yeah. Does anyone want to be That's my fine, you don't have to. You will have a no. reason to go with each other. Um, Okay. <laughs> Does anyone want to be my friend? No. No. Okay. Nobody wants to be Tom Hazel's friend. Justice for Hazel. Me? Huh? I don't know how an Arthamar would know you. I don't think you would really, would you? No. You might know me, I'm a bit of an oddball. Oh, hang on a minute, that's the point. Deep gnomes, do they hate drows? Uh, no, they actually work with drows occasionally to help oh, train and things too. like that. No, yeah. <laughs> I don't know. I don't think she's the criminally... Not as much. That's not like her main thing. That's fair enough. Okay. She's not like fear. Yeah, I don't know. I don't think an Arthamar. You don't have to know each other. It's just a, an option if you, any of you wanted to. Though. Hey, do you want to be my lackey, Trot? No. Do you want to get butchered in the face by grief? <laughs> Random <laughs> item, but I thought it had this <laughs> a certain coolness to it. Uh, a figurine of wondrous power of a silver raven. What's that? It transforms into a raven and can cast animal messenger at will, so it can basically deliver messages. Okay, cool. Uh -huh. You can basically send it and it can deliver Trot, a short message for you. you? Tempus. Okay. The glory of battle. Because if I follow... Is that your voice? No. Okay. <laughs> That's the voice of my gosh. If I follow um, Tempest as well, then... I, I would be in direct competition with you, um, because I am... Because you're anti-Tempest most... now? No, I'm not anti-Tempus. Uh, I'm just the best. Okay. Cool. I'm the best follower. It you was it's me. created. It is has a yeah. fey origin. Better than everyone. Unless you um, can prove yourself. And it can shed dim light in a five foot radius. You die, because I have to absolutely destroy you. I'm a ghost, um, motherfucker. That's true. I'd, I'd find that very annoying. <laughs> very you annoying. can't hit me. Oh. You can't hit me. <laughs> Come here. Spectral form. The Spectral item form. features <laughs> in a prophecy. Features in a prophecy. Its bearer is destined to play a key role in future events. So we can write a cool prophecy with your little raven icon. We need to name it now. Um, need to name it raven. Oh! Call it oh. Think of a type of creature. What kind of creature? Uh, just name something that maybe your character would want to try and avoid. Try and avoid? Yeah. The spider. Spiders? To make it... No, actually... Bluff. <laughs> Chris Trot. It's <laughs> not a creature. Elves, spiders. The holder. Can it be like a race instead? Of, yeah, um... it can be a race. Type of, it just says uh, choose a kind of creature. Goblins, orcs. Or I can pick it for you because it is of the item's creator, which is Faye, so I could pick it. Go for it. I'm going to pick. Uh, let's see. I think. I roll the d4. I'm going to come up with four ideas: dragons, giants, um, hobgoblin, hobgoblin. That's a good one. And orc. <laughs> Dragons. Interesting. Uh, choose whenever this, whenever a dragon is within 120 feet, this item will glow. Oh, nice. like sting, like sting. Great singer. Oh, so perhaps its prophecy is tied to it being wary of dragons. Dargons. The raven shall fly when the dragon does Comes die. By. Uh, yeah, that too. <laughs> That too is written in the prophecy. <laughs> I need that help. Too. I need help. I need help. Yes. Um, Ask your question. So armor wise and weapon wise. Yes. Uh, I have proficiency in light armor, medium armor, armor, simple weapons and martial weapons. Yes. Uh, and then I so have you'll this... need a PHB for the armors and stuff. I have this thing that says fighting style. At level two, you adopt a style of fighting as your speciality. Yes. Um, so archery, dueling, great weapon fighting or two weapon fighting. Yes. Don't quite understand. So, like, so it's setting like, do I fight with bows? Do you do fight I with fight bows? As a duelist? Dueling is yeah, having a single weapon in one hand. hand and no other weapon in the other. You can still have a shield and benefit from dueling. So you can have a shield in a one-handed. But basically, it's the one-handed weapon fighting style. Mm -hmm. A two-handed weapon fighting style, like a double-handed sword or hammer or something, or, or uh, a weapon in each hand. 
What do you guys recommend? What do you think? No, it's, this is a character thing. Like, what do you think your character would use? I think use? she'd have a shield and a sword. Like, very Valkyrie-esque. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. that's pretty cool. Yep. I think, like, for me, like, visually, I like the idea of either sword and shield or bow. I think bow looks pretty fucking cool as well. Like, a fucking ghost bow? I don't know, I just think that that's like a fucking like an angel. fallen angel with a ghost bow is or pretty fucking like rad. Shadow like, of Mordor. Like, psh, yeah, like she, yeah, exactly. Keller Kel Brimbor from Shadow of Mordor kind of thing. Mm. Or Sword and Shield for that Valkyrie, like, mm. ma flying in. Anti-Cupid. Um, and martial weapons, simple weapons means you're proficient with any weapon on in the PHB. Um, medium armor means you can only go up to a certain type of armor, you can't wear heavy. Mm -hmm. I don't it, think you can get wrong says, with Sword and Shield. A lot of people yeah. are saying spear and shield. It says I can start with um, studded leather armor or scale uh, mail. Ignore armor. about that because in this, your sixth level, you can basically have what whatever armor you Do want, what want me. and stuff like that. Okay. Shield and spear. Spear. Spear's Spear. pretty cool. Actually, yeah. I like That's that. That's pretty OP. Very I'm Thinking of like Athena. Like, yeah. 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 Okay. What are Shield. you using I'm gonna to go roll for that. the magic? Thanks, everyone. Uh, I am using Amazon. the Dungeon Master's Guide, and okay. there is a magic items table uh, in here, which is just used for generating treasure, which I'm just using. Okay. Uh, it is on page 146 of the Dungeon Master's Guide. Hi. Tom Hazel. Hello. I'm rolling you a magic item as I speak. Oh, I am Exciting. So excited. Uh, <laughs> And the roll, because I want to find something which is. I'm not going to give you something completely unusable. Um, I'll use it. No, no, no. I'm not going to give you something completely unusable. You get a magical clam. A plank <laughs> of prosperity. <laughs> Everyone's freaking out that we've got no healer and no ranged. Um, you do. Doesn't matter. Who cares? Doesn't matter. You don't need to have great group composition to have a great D&D &D game. Also, What's technically, um, I can do healing hands. Yeah, you've got Well, the pa to be honest, yeah. actually, you have got a healer, you've got a paladin. Yeah. I'm not saying he's going to heal you that much, but he can. As <laughs> well, my, me. my blood stuff has like a 30-foot range. I think if I, kill, if I kill something, I can take its essence as a death thing. Yes, you can heal. You give yourself temporary hit points, can't you? Temp hit points. Oh, when you like also, you their soul. Yeah. It makes things more exciting thing. when the, well, you have to worry about very... not being healed. That's cool. Tom it's Hazil. not quite as... Black and white as that. <laughs> well, let me find it. Okay. It's, I think it's when a creature dies within, within certain amounts. It's within amount. five feet of me. Okay. Or something. Tom Hazel. Yes. You have a magical cloak, <gasps> uh, which a cloak of protection. <gasps> Oh. It provides a plus one bonus to AC and saving throws, and I'm going to roll up uh, how it was created and the history of it. Um. Oh, 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 oh. This is pretty badass, especially for a deep gnome, actually. Okay, so it is cloak of protection plus one AC and saving throws. Uh, it is crafted from the elemental plane of fire. Wow. So it has metal parts uh, from black iron, sigils of flames, shades of red and orange. Perhaps even a slight dim glow wow. of the forge. That will really influence damn. Nina's uh, design there. Um, um, that's pretty cool. My study of death allows me to extract vitality from another creature as it nears its demise. When you reduce a creature within five feet to zero hit points, you gain temporary hit points oh. equal to your wisdom and your monk level. Damn, that's so cool. six. What's your wisdom modifier at the moment? That's, that's at third level. Okay, nice. So would that be to all six. my saving throws? What's your, I said, like, what's your thing? What's your um, wisdom modifier? I think so. Oh, um... Is it plus one? Is it plus one to all saving throws? Or just yes. your proficient one? Well, I don't have a wisdom modifier, so it's just my level. Just level, at the moment. Um, and then at sixth level, I gain the ability to unsettle or terrify those around me as an action. Just like... Fucking <laughs> Death! Um, nice. Uh, so it is uh, also this item, you yes. would want to know, uh, Tom Hazel. Okay. Um, it was <laughs> created... Uh, by the foes of a particular culture or kind of creature. If the creature or cultures are still around, they might recognize the item and single out the bearer as an enemy. Um, as it was created oh. by the elemental plane of fire, I'm going to have it is, uh, it is a bane to creatures of the sea, such as Sahogan, Mero, Merfolk, and the like. Okay, so. Sharp. Um, enemy of the sea. Of <laughs> the. People are saying I'm making a monk with no wisdom as if it's a crime. See. It's not a crime. It's. You know, you use wisdom for a bunch of things as a monk, but it doesn't mean you have to have one. Do you? Uh, things like your stunning strike totally DCs and stuff like that. Yeah. Dexterity. Dexterity is mainly used for. Um, I mean, you can always like. Can, swap them uh, there's around. also drow stuff that use charisma to. So. Yeah, the, the drow magic will use charisma, but your, most of your monk abilities come from wisdom. Do they? Okay, well then. In you can swap case, stats around. Want to swatch. Yeah. yeah. Do you want to see Jutos stats? They're not great, but you can see what I've kind of. 
It's um, things like what Stunning Strike. I don't have any other. Bad. It's either it 10 or 12. Well, well that used to be good. It's plus well, I know. Or I came back. Yeah. So they, um, that was the penalty. You could. What about if. Because what was in though, your charisma before you got it boosted yeah. by Drown? Um, which for a month is cool. Is it a uh, okay. 12? That could do with coming up. And that's what I'm going to. Oh, yeah, because half yeah, health yeah. is plus 2 charisma. So you yeah. could always take the 12, put that in wisdom. Death, and then whatever you've got in wisdom currently me. would give you oh, a 12 or whatever in oh, charisma man. instead. And then you'd at least have a bonus. Um, wait, what? So, so what have you got in wisdom at the moment? Just a 10. So, it, so if I you put the 10 in charisma, yeah, yeah. it will go I to a 12 because you're a half elf. But I've already added my other things. Oh, okay. Things. Yeah, if you've already added stuff, then don't worry about so. it. It's up to you if you wanted to change it, but... Um, you haven't filled in the things that... What? I added bonuses to these from my class. Did you do your you haven't done your ability score improvements yet, have you? Yes, I have. Have you? Yes, I have. Which ones did you increase? Intelligence. Ah, you increased the the odd ones. Okay. I um, did. Three yeah, minutes. I increased the odd ones. Eight, just three minutes. Then we will wrap. I'll figure out things on my own up. time. We'll Do figure I that out. Magic item? Yes, I'm just going to quickly. Uh, I'll figure your one out in a minute. I'm just going to roll up a magic item for Kimberly. Yep. And then Do we'll I get a helmet? Can I have a helmet? I just think Maybe. it'd be cool to have That's a helmet. I'm going to have a helmet. Like wings on the side. I'm going to have a helmet I take off now again. It's going to be badass. I'd like one of those half helms. I'm looking forward to the art. Yeah. It's going to be so cool. I'm just trying to find, again, I'm rolling stuff that you wouldn't really use. I want to see if anyone does any fan art as well. I'm just really imagining like a Athena or something. Right now. Just like yeah. Like a ghostly. Yeah. Athena. <laughs> Amazon. Uh, magic shield, actually. Hello! Which is what I rolled. Nice. Um, Medusa, calling it. Check monk AC, what do you mean? Oh yes, you get bonus AC from wisdom as a monk. That's the other one. Unarmored defense. Yep. We'll figure it out, we'll figure yeah. it out. We'll work it out. Uh, uh, it is a dwarven made shield. Uh, the item is durable and has dwarven runes worked into its design. It may be associated with a clan um, at some point in its history. Um, and it is a symbol of power. This item was once used as part of a royal regalia or as a badge of high office. Its former owners or that person's descendants might desire it, or someone might mistakenly assume its new owner is the item's legitimate inheritor. Um, so it's a symbol of power, and then its minor property is harmonious. Attuned to this item only takes one minute. Cool. So we can um, figure out the details of that. Okay. Um, but that's it. So we'll finish up. We've got a few more things to wrap up on these. Uh, just the guys adding some finishing touches, adding some story elements. But you can tune in for the first episode of Dead Reckoning next Wednesday um, at 6 p.m. BST, 10 a.m. PDT. That's the times uh, where we'll be playing these characters for the first uh, installment. And to give you a little taste, uh, the idea is that the characters are, are currently suffering from strange maladies, uh, dark nightmares of dying, uh, coughing up black Icarus blood and innards, um, and general bad stuff has been plaguing you. So you have travelled to the city of Neverwinter to seek out the one group which seemed to know a little something of this strange cause. Uh, you, are being, you are trying to seek out the Harpers, uh, an agent of spies that are all across the Forgotten Realms, who are said to know a little bit more about this strange malady that is affecting you. Um, and that is where our adventure begins next week. So you can Fine. check that out on Wednesday on twitch.tv forward slash dnd right here. And if you'd like to see more of us playing Dungeons & Dragons, you can tune in on Sundays at twitch.tv forward slash yogscast at 5pm BST, 9am PDT, to watch our regular game. And that, our good friends, is it for today. Um, VODs, where are they going? VODs! are not going to be on a Yogs Live, which is where our normal campaign going. And in fact, if all of you in chat, if you see anybody asking about VODs, whether it's on Twitter or in chat or anything like that, please let them know. It's all being done on the Wizards D&D website. So go to their YouTube channel. It's on their Twitch. They'll be able to watch it there. I don't think that they've got any of their VODs locked. Um, so you can check it out there. And I, they have a YouTube channel as well. They have, I did say YouTube channel as well, yeah. but thank you for <laughs> that. It's good to say it again, Chris Trot. It's great. So if you do see anybody asking, please direct them to those places. Um, it's the question we get asked all the time and we can only answer it so many times. They also have a YouTube channel. They also have a YouTube channel. Thank you very much, Chris Trot. Good boy. Uh, good boy. Uh, so thank you very much for watching this one. You'll get to see these characters in action next week uh, for an 11 episode uh, miniseries, Dead Reckoning. Longer than before. Longer than before. Maybe even longer than that. Who knows? Who knows? Uh, and we'll see you guys next time. Bye, everybody. Bye. Goodbye.